run. However, I'm not happy with where he's running. So I use the player lock effectively to control my striker. You press the left and right analog stick in at the same time and then press the right stick to who you want to receive the ball with. So now what I want to do with my striker is bend my run round the centre back. So when I receive the through ball, I'm going to be bearing down on goal, which is exactly what we do here. It now means I'm in a very dangerous position and we apply the finishing touch using a chipped finish. So tip number two is how to effectively use the driven pass. So as we can see in this clip, I pick the ball up out wide my left midfielder and I'm looking to create the angle of passing to one of my two strikers. So I managed to recycle the ball. I go back to my midfielder. And as we can see, I've triggered my striker's run and I have two strikers to hit now, which I want to hit with the driven pass. To perform the driven pass, we use R1 and X at the same time. And we can see here, as I use it, it comes perfectly into the space and I get my shot off before the centre back can get there. Possession in attack. So what does this actually mean? Well, I've noticed from all my years playing FIFA that a lot of people are in a rush to get to the goal and try and score as quickly as possible. Sometimes that means we don't pick the right passes. As we can see in this clip here, I'm going to recycle the ball. I have the ball with my striker and I'm looking for my other striker or my midfielder that's making an advanced run. I noticed very quickly that he's got both of these passes covered and this is when I make the decision that it's best to recycle the ball and be patient in attack. Here, I pass the ball backwards and I notice that the area of the pitch is very, very congested in the middle. As a result of this, I go out wide to my left back. He's got the space to attack and my aim here is to try and bring out a couple of them players in the middle area. It's way too congested to create a chance. So my aim is to try and attack the space as much as possible to start pulling these players out of position. I drive forward and we can see a couple of mid midfielders have now come out to engage with the ball and it means that I can rotate the ball around the area and try and find the right pass. So I go back to my midfielder who goes into my striker and now we're in a very, very dangerous position. We can see that recycle has helped me get to this spot here. As I get the ball, the pass opens up to my striker and that's where we get the goal. I've been Tom, I hope you've all enjoyed my 4-4-2 masterclass and I'll see you all on the pitch.
What's going on everyone? Olelito here. I'm a professional FIFA player for Ninjas in Pajamas and today I will be showing you a masterclass how to defend in FIFA 22. In this masterclass I will be showing you first of all how to play a switch, how to pressure play and how to use your center backs in the best kind of way. First of all I have the ball with my CM here. The thing is that I play a very very sloppy pass here trying to reach my other CM. The thing though here though is that the R1 pass in FIFA 22 is super 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 effective. And why? Because the accuracy of the pass is very very good. So the thing I want to do here first of all is to bumper switch to the closest player in this case that's closest to, to the striker making a running behind which is my center back. So I'm switching to my center back here as you see and from now on I'm in front of the ball. So most likely I will get it which happens and after that I can start my attack and hopefully score a goal. The second topic I want to talk about today is where to press and I can tell you for a fact that this will improve your defense in FIFA 22. So as you see here, I'm brave enough here to be able to control my center back and trying to put pressure on his winger. And I'm actually at the same time as I'm putting pressure on his winger here as you see in this clip, I'm also cutting off the passing lane to his winger then making a run in behind. So, the thing I'm doing here is to always still put pressure on him because he feels like I'm very very close to him all the time. He makes a rush decision and the outcome of this then is that he is running out with the ball, I'm getting a throw in and I can start my attack from there. The third topic of today is how to use the center backs. And I think it's a very very hard thing in this FIFA to do. First of all, I see that he is starting a very dangerous counter attack. So he gets the ball into his striker. The thing that, that is going on in my head here is I need to put pressure on the ball holder. So the, th the thing I'm doing first of all is to put the R1 pressure with your R1 bumper on your controller with my right center back here, which allows him to basically don't have any passing options here. So, as you see, the only thing he can do is to go forward. But at the same time here, I see that he has tried to do the play lock option which you do by pressing down your L3 and R3 at the same time. So, I'm switching to my left center back here to be able to cover the space in behind, which can be very, very dangerous because we know these through balls in this game are, are uh, effective. So, I'm switching to my center back, but at the same time trying to put pr pressure on the ball holder, which then results in me getting the ball and starting a good attack. So guys, this has been Ulelite for you all. Uh, thank you so much for watching this masterclass. See you on the pitch. See you on the pitch.
FGS All Stars, be my teammate with me, Rachel Stringer, and Man City FIFA Pro, Ryan Pessoa. Ryan, it's great to be back once again for week two. And I want to know when you were trying to become a pro, I mean, it was quite some years ago now, would you have loved to have been part of these kind of events? And would you have entered? Um, of course, great to be alongside you again, Rachel. And absolutely, I think it's key to have competitions where you could say players or people from the community can play with pro players. I'd say, would I have entered? I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. I probably would have now because, of course, how important it is to get your name out there and the experience. But again, these players have a lot of opportunities now. You're probably actually really nervous, wouldn't you, to actually yeah, be paired yeah, yeah, up yeah, with a pro, yeah. which is, of course, the format of today, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I would have been a bag of nerves. That's why it probably might put me off. But again, the key is just to get involved in these type of things. Ryan, you're much more confident now, let me tell you that. Anyway, we kind of alluded to the format of these mini FIFA tournaments. Let's just bring you up to speed then. Obviously, one week's already been played. That was last week. Two more still yep. to go. And it's a FIFA Pro paired up with a community teammate. And they'll go head to head with another pair for some prize money. It's each week, of course, with four 2v2 teams who will try and become weekly champions. Looking at the screen now, last week it was the turn of the North American region and it was Yoxan and Ronan Adraman who became champions. This week we turn our attention of course to South America and then next week, the final week of this mini FIFA tournament, April the 26th at an earlier time of 6pm UK time. We have Europe, Middle East and Africa of course to round out the competition and you can see at the bottom of the screen there, there is prize money, of course there is, and all of it actually goes to our FIFA community member, which I think is just awesome. This is how the prize money then is broken down this evening. First place then, as you can see, 5,000 US dollars. Second place, 2,500 US dollars. And third and fourth place, they get 1,250 US dollars. And just again to remind you that the FIFA community member gets the prize money. All right, then, let's move on and look at the bracket tonight and see who's playing from the South American region, Ryan. 
Yes, Rachel. I love watching the South America players compete. And we do have Team SPQR Felipe partnering with Gamboa Lucas up against NSC Klinger and Andres Bruno for the first matchup. On the other side of the bracket, you can see some familiar faces as well. You see Paolo Neto representing Atlanta United. Partnering up with Mekinio 06 up against Inter's Resende and AMZ Leo Zera. And of course, the winners of either side partner up will play against each other in the final for that grand prize of $5,000. Yeah, of course. And looking at that screen there, you guys at home will probably recognise four of those fo uh, uh, pro FIFA players, of course. But Ryan, there's four names there that maybe we haven't heard of before. And just remind everyone at home how those four players booked their spot here tonight. Yep, as you mentioned, the four players had to go through the Sony Fan Cup. In order to reach this stage, they had to go through a Swiss format, reaching the latter stages up against players vying for, for the same prize to be here today. So again, it wasn't easy. They had to do a lot to get here, and rightly so, they're here on merit. Yeah, obviously that shows the quality um, alone, doesn't it? Just actually making yep. it here tonight for all four of our community FIFA members. But let's then have a little bit of a deep dive into some of the more familiar faces in the pro players. Let's start with SPQR Felipe. Ryan, obviously we saw him, didn't we, only a couple of weeks back in his FGS Masters Cup because he was playing then, wasn't he? Yeah, as you mentioned, played in the FGS Masters a couple of weeks ago. So again, he has the experience and the know-how of playing at 2v2 tournaments. And he's very, very young. He's a player that I've heard his name around the scene for a number of years now. Aged just 18, as you can see on the screen. But he has some fantastic accolades to his name in FIFA 21, winning the South America qualifier number five on Xbox, giving him that confidence and boost going into the Xbox playoffs shortly after where he ended up winning that as well and, of course, booking his spot in the Grand Finals. And he's taken that talent into FIFA 22, performing well as well. And then let's have a look then at the pro he's against. So on the other side of things, it's uh, NSE Klinger, of course. Ryan, again, super young, 21 years of age. I mean, this is uh, not a regular, is it, for these FIFA players? They're all so young, early kind of teens and, and 20-year-olds. Uh, what do we know about this player? Yep, exactly. As you can see, his accolades on the screen. Finishing top four in FGS 21 in the South America region for qualifier number four. And again, taking his form into FIFA 22. He's ranked number two in the South American leaderboard this year in the competitive season. And that's because he won the FGS 22 South American qualifier number two, which was shortly, uh, well, just a short while ago. So again, he has that confidence to know how, how to win at tournaments. And we're hoping that for his teammate today, in Andres Bruno, we'll be hoping that he can give him that guidance and that know-how on how to reach finals and win tournaments so they can do that today. Yeah, Ryan, just, just kind of go into that a bit more then. You just said Klinger, obviously, you know, sitting second in those South American rankings. Um, for you as well, personally, when you're really ranked highly in your region, how much com confidence would it give you coming into an event like this tonight? Even though the pressure isn't particularly on you, is maybe more on your teammate who, you know, really wants to make their mark on the scene. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think the pressure's on them as well, you know, because for me, if I'm playing with a community member, I'd want to make sure that I do my best just to make sure that I'd rather... I'm playing for them, basically, so I'd want them to do well more so than myself. But again, the confidence aspect of beating players in your region who are amongst the best players. He would have had to play players in this tournament as well in that, that route to the final, and he knows what it takes to win. And again, as I say, the more wins you get in the competitive scene... Whatever tournament it is, of course, this is a 2v2, but even in a 1v1 aspect, it builds on mountains and mountains just going into the future tournaments. Again, confidence is, is key when you compete at this high level. Yeah, totally. And how much time do you think the pro players will have put into this in terms of playing with their community teammates and practising behind the scenes? Oh, that's tricky. I think it's difficult because the schedule now... Well, we recently had a, another qualifier the, the past weekend. So, again, it would have been difficult to find the amount of time just to dedicate to it. And, again, he's also competed in the, the FGS Masters Cup a couple of weeks ago. So, we would have had to had to play 2v2 with a different teammate as well. So, hopefully, for their sake, anyway, they would have had some experience coming into it. But, again, we saw from the previous weeks that even if you go in on, on the first games with each other, you can go the distance. We saw Yoxen as well with Ronan Adrian and how well they performed. Yeah, totally. And I actually looked at a tweet from Yoxan after winning last week and he kind of just said it was so great just to get some more high level 2v2 practice in, obviously on stream as well. How important is that, Ryan? I think it's key. Again, this year has been, well, we've had 2v2 tournaments in the past, but having it a sort of dedicated tournament like the Team of the Season Cups, Team of the Year Cups, FGS Masters this season has been fantastic. And of course, 
gaining that that experience playing in 2v2 because it is different 1v1 of course you're it's down to your own skill level you have to partner up with a teammate there's also aspects not just the, your skill level com combined with one another but communication your just how cooperative you are with each other that's very very important so having that experience and being able to play for prize money and for tournaments is very important as well and one final question, Ryan. You just mentioned the prize money. Obviously, five thousand US dollars for the community FIFA member tonight. Ronan Adrian obviously took that home last week. If you were in Ronan Adrian's shoes last week, you won five thousand US dollars as a, an up-and-coming pro. Would you have gone and spent it on something nice and fancy, or invested it in your career as a FIFA player? Tough Ooh. question, but I'm asking you. <laughs> Be truthful. I, for me personally, for me, I would have. I would reinvest it personally. That's what I would do. But again, some people are different. They might use it for, for different things. But again, I think it's key, whether it's this year or next year, you can still keep some money just to, to reinvest for the next season as well. I love that. Ryan Bissoma, obviously giving the tick box answer there, investing it <laughs> in his FIFA career. Right, Ryan, well, I believe we're nearly ready. I want your final predictions, though. SPQR Felipe up against NSE Klinger. Which way is this one going? Again, both great players. I'm going to go with Felipe. Again, we saw him a couple of weeks ago. I just liked what I saw. I've known him, well, I've known his, his name in the scene a little while now. Same with Klinger in fairness, so I don't know where I'm going with that, but I just think that Felipe just has what it takes and they might have just a better, better just team cohesion with one another and they could go the distance. I love that you went that way, that Klinger's in form and you're going with Felipe. Anyway, yeah, yeah. another <laughs> more chit chat. Let's go up to our casters for this first semi-final. Of course, it's Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Boys, enjoy this film. Thank you very much, Rachel. And yes, welcome back to technically week two here of this FGS All-Stars Be My Team. A great little sort of activation was giving up and coming players the chance to partner alongside some of the best players in the world of FIFA Esports. And Rich, we saw yesterday not a taster of these newcomer players that don't really know their way about the virtual pitch. We saw very good FIFA players out in North America, and I expect to see the same here over on the other side of America, here in the South America region, where it's going to be very heavy brazilian s players teaming up with four of the very best players from this region tonight. Yeah, absolutely, Brandon. And also, only th uh, a couple of weeks ago, three out of the four players competing today, we saw them in action. Uh, a few weeks ago in the FGS Masters as well. So uh, I think there's there's a little bit of rivalry starting to build up as well uh, as we get into that Team of the Season Cup in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to see Resende there. We're going to see Felipe there. So if one of these players catches your eye on the pro scene today, keep an eye out for him in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah, and just a word on the four competitive players we have got, Richard, here from the, the FGS ecosystem. We've got such a good mixture of South American players here tonight because we've got Felipe, who was a new and upcoming player last year, made the FIFA E World Cup Grand Final at 18 years of age. And on the flip side, we've got Resende, 24 years of age, which is still very young, but he's won so much. He's been to multiple FIFA E World Cup finals. There's such a good array of talent here in South America that will be teaming up with our Sony Fan Cup winners. What's your take on that? I mean, you said sort of Resende, uh, young within the scene still, 24. There's people eight years younger than him at the moment, 16 years old, yeah. bursting through onto the scene. If you were a player, Brandon, I know you just turned 25 yesterday, you'd be feeling quite old. I'd probably be looking at retirement uh, if I was you. Happy belated birthday for that as well. I'm excited. Uh, I think we've got a good range of players. I think we've got a good range of trophies as well from sort of Conobol, Ilipadores, playoff champions, and also the global uh, sort of level as well when we were competing pre the pandemic and we saw Resende E World Cups. So I I'm really looking forward to seeing what today does bring. Absolutely. Well, if you missed last week's action, we're going to take you through what you might have missed because it was Joxan and his teammate in Ronan Andrew. The were the champions last time out in what was a really competitive grand final for them, Richard. And what a game it was in the end. $5,000 Team Joxan picked up. As we know, with this current format, the pro gets none of it. It's all to the Fan Cup winner. And that man is a player that we know very well. Played a lot of the PlayStation tournaments, played a lot in the, the competition center which PlayStation does offer for the next level of up-and-coming pros. He finally got his place on the world stage and he picked up $5,000 and uh, certainly enjoyed himself. And what was a very competitive grand final. You can see some of the best moments from it. Well, we thought it would be one-way traffic yeah, well, uh. when Joxer and Ronan Adrian went 2-0 up. 
inside the first 35 minutes, but Zazinho got a goal back there to go to a piece. Going into the second leg, Zazinho, Team Duck Zazinho went 3-2 up and quickly followed it up just before the 20th minute. CR7 whipping into R9 there and a finish into the back of the net. We thought that this game might be over, but you can never count out Joxan. You can never count out Ronan Adrian. They got two goals in quick succession. It was a little bit of great feat there in around the box. The McGeady cancel, and that was all Ronan Adrian as we went into a real important and pivotal final few stages of this final. It went into penalties, and from here, you see that winning penalty. It was Joxan and Ronan Adrian. They put it away. Jude Bellingham could not. No, that was it. What a way to win that was. <laughs> Be my teammate. Joxan certainly enjoyed that one. Ronan Adrian enjoyed it even more. They were your champions. $5,000 richer and winners of our first edition of this brand new tournament. It's part of our FGS season. Highlight some of the best players in the world. We've got South America here this week. Next week, we conclude uh, this three-week series, so to speak. We've got Europe and Middle East all coming together. MS Desire will be in town. Nicholas99 of Guild Esports will be in town as well. That one plans to be another great week of FIFA when it does come round because it's been building up week by week. We're seeing so much of the talent here in the world of, uh, of FIFA Esports. You just saw it there. You saw the the enjoyment and sort of the, just the facial expressions and the, the, the overall picture what was being painted right there before your very eyes. Ron and Adrian laughing and smiling. Jocks are giving it a big let's go. He knows that that $5,000 is all going to the community member. It's a really, really good and enjoyable project. And look, I, I think this is something that we're going to see more of. I, I really do like this sort of the, the pro-am, uh, as we've seen in other sports, where you have the, the more amateur player combining with the pro player. Because also, not only do we see good rising talent in the sort of the semi-pro community member amateur scene, but also it really goes out to show not only how good the pro is, but also how good is the pro at taking somebody under their wing, tutoring someone, teaching someone, and, and being a really good teammate. It, it's fantastic when you've got all another world-class top 0.01% player next year. But when you've got somebody who, who maybe hasn't got that experience on the grandest stage, who maybe hasn't won hundreds of thousands of dollars before in competitions, when you've got somebody who are nervous and this is their opportunity to make a mark, to then bring them up to your level, that takes a real caliber of FIFA talent. Yeah, and one thing that I've loved from the pros as well, it's not been a case if they turned up for one evening and they've played their games in this competition. We've seen off screen and, and pre broadcast, the players playing friendlies with each other, Richard, you know, really sort of getting into the game, so to speak. It must be said as well, 2v2 FIFA, we are playing here, the newest addition to FIFA Esports over the last few years. And this is the bracket of tonight. We're kicking off on the left hand side of play where we're seeing SPQR's Felipe up against NSC Klinger with his teammate Andreas uh, Bruno 2000. On the flip side, Atlanta United's Paolo Neto against Inter Ascender. That one plans to be a great game, obviously, with their two Sony Fan Cup winners in um, Aquino 6X and AMZ uh, Leo Zira 730. All four players that are teaming up with the pros have come through a really strenuous and difficult qualification, which to get. I believe it's five, six rounds of Swiss format, but they've had to win back to back to back to back without dropping a single game. Yeah, it's really important how they've managed to qualify, but they have qualified. They've got their opportunity here. And let's see who can take it with both hands as we're underway. Game one here. First matchup here. Unis PQR Felipe from left to right. Cling up. Right to left. Both very good FIFA pro players in their own right. Felipe was an up and coming star last year in the FIFA scene. 18 years of age, made his first ever FIFA E World Cup final. And he's been a player that's been competing since he was 16 years of age back in. 
Chocolate Champions Cups on FIFA 20, where he's travelling out to the likes of. Harris, he got himself a top eight finish there. Bagged himself his first ever real lump sum of cash, seven and a half thousand dollars. It, it, it was a great tournament as well because it, it built a lot of confidence. Obviously, with what has happened, we, we went all remote and we went into the individual regions, and he sort of climbed the ranks. But you mentioned Foot Cup 4, that was Paris, sort of February uh, 2020. In FIFA 21, it took him a little bit of time to, to get up to grips with the likes of PH Zin and also Resende. He peaked late and he peaked at the perfect time, winning the playoffs and guaranteeing a spot at the E World Cup. Comes that team now, Felipe towards the back post, can't quite find his way through. Occasions, a long ball forward from Team Klinger, who, just a word on him for a split second, he's a player that's been in the scene for quite some time, he's 21 years of age, the one thing that sort of strikes by about this player, Richard, he's sort of played that well that he's got the recognition of the national team, he plays in the national team. On the build-up to the FIFA E Nations Cup, a tournament was just announced just a few weeks ago, taking place late in July in Copenhagen. Who is the likes of PH in Resende, who's on the opposite side of the bracket, Crepaldi. There's no Felipe in that national team, there's no Palanetto in that national team, which goes to show just how good he has been. You look across his run, the top 16 in the playoffs last year, ball into the box, is a brilliant start Ooh. for the player that we have just been hyping up. It's team of the year, Cristiano Ronaldo, on the 21st minute. And it's the start of dreams for a player that, to be completely honest, we haven't spoken too much about him. It's been all about Felipe so far. Great win. Floated cross inside the box, clear. With a, a really, really good start here. Oh, wow. Oh, that one's short lived. Instant reply from SPQR's Felipe. And who else would it be than Brian Michael Moment I nine? A man that'll be scoring plenty of goals today, we can tell you that. Across the length of the broadcast. A Brazilian superstar popping up to kick off first match up here in South America off in the best way possible. 1 1 the scoreline, a smash and grab start here. Remember, we'll be playing over two legs of an aggregate scoreline, being the biggest difference to guarantee a grand final spot. If we must say on top of that, you get a grand final spot. It's $2,500 guaranteed for getting that. Each of these. FGS All-Star Be My Teammate Tournaments have a $10,000 prize pot. Even if you made a grand final, you don't go over the full way. Back to goal, SPQR's Fleet play, plays the one more, did he really need it? Went for the cutback, Pele can't find his way around the corner. But back to the point, if you get to a grand final, you're still getting your hands on some serious cash. Yeah, you certainly are, and also the... Just the, the opportunity, you want to play at the very best for your community teammate, whether that's Gamboa Lucas in Felipe's corner or Andres Bruno with Klinger. They're the people this is all about, they're the stars of the show. The, the pro players are just the sporting act. We know that the pros have been the captains in these teams, they had full control over the selection of the foot squads. Mbappe features alongside the likes of Prime. I come over to Pele, R9, you can imagine. The teams will be very similar for at least nine or ten players in the squad. You might see the odd player pop up, some players might back team of the Ronaldo, as you see in here on the side of well, both teams, to be fair. However, that isn't always the case, as we saw the likes of Vieira popping in as a centre back. Ruben Diaz got dropped last week. I mean, I don't know how you can drop the Portuguese team of the year defender. He is that good and that important in your team. Let's be curious, Felipe again. Speaking of Ronaldo, does well to get the ball there, loses possession. The point of the story there, Richard, is that everyone's got the the power to build the team that they want. There will be some involvement, don't get me wrong, from the, the Sony Fan Cup winners. They'll get to have their say. I'm sure the pros won't be that harsh that they say, This is our team, this is what we're using. I'm sure they'll be like open to the, the <laughs> fact of you guys have played FIFA, you've played well to get to this, this, this grand finals. Who do you want on the bench? Who do you want to play? What formation do you enjoy using? Let's give it a try. I'm happy to play with what you enjoy. Yeah, I mean, the, the formation and the tactical side of it, I'm sure, will be a conversation 
but I mean, the, the squad selection and the personnel is quite self-explanatory. Uh, the, they've got the unlocked accounts. The prime icon moments are going to be really heavy in those teams. Jude Bellingham is going to be amongst it as well as we come into half time. Two quick fire goals in these first 45 minutes. One apiece as it currently stands. You can see the stats. Possession slightly favourite in the favour of Felipe. Other than that, XG 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Nothing too else much to talk about there as we get back underway in the second half of action. Yeah, it was a brilliant start for NSC Klinger, who did score with of the Ronaldo. As you can see by the possession stats after that, they didn't have much of the ball. Been all in the hands of Team SPQR Felipe and his teammate Gamboa Lucas. Who's the man to come out on top from that individual Sony Fan Cup? They took place back in early March. The fans and upcoming pro players from around the world were given the chance to take part in this FGS All Stars campaign where there's a serious lump of cash on the line. Also, every grand finalist also wins a PlayStation 5. Something we haven't spoken about too much in detail. So just for getting here tonight, you've already guaranteed yourself a PlayStation 5 and at least $1,250. Not bad going. Jordan again finds on. Oh, and he might have timed it red. But he's done very well there. The team that have had about 40% possession strike again into the lead. As you can see. Live shots there across the grounds, across there. Multiple households. R9 Ronaldo, the moment of the man of the moment, I should say. The moment of the man, whatever way you want to call it, he's the person putting the wall in the back of the net at the moment. For Klinger. And Andres Bruno. Oh, hello. Very nearly again. It was another. Instant reply could still be Jude Bellingham. The only future star writing to feature in these squads. Mbappe back to goal. Oh, One no, eye, brilliantly done. The composure. So, so impressive. And correct me if I'm wrong there, Rich. I believe that was the, the Sony Van Cup winner who just showed that composure. Yeah. Gambo and Lucas. He's got that yellow icon above his head. It just goes to show how good these players are that have bowed their way for online competition. They deserve to be here and they've got the ability to compete in these 2v2 teams with some of the best players in South America. The red icon, as we said, is Felipe. The yellow is his teammate in Gambo. On the flip side, I believe, it is the blue. The Venice Klinger and his teammate, Andreas Bruno, who could have the chance to go now. Mbappe, lovely little skill move there, can't turn around. What, what colour would you say that is? Uh, maybe a teal? Aqua? Is it a turquoise or not? I could take a turquoise. We had last week, Richard. The quality is not disappointed again. The XG might have been 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 at halfway point. However, minutes on, we've had four goals. We've gone away to our fifth here. Here comes I know. Finger in control, tries his best to combine a few full rolls and a reverse elastico to buy himself a pocket of space. Can't quite find that. Are in this game. Team SPQ, I've never taken the lead, I've always been in a trailing position. The car, gonna have to bounce back every single time. Pull it. Got the ball well, a heavy touch should go out for a corner. There's the first pause. We said 20 minutes left to play here. As you said, we've got these unlocked accounts where these players can literally use any player in the game up to a certain date. Expect to see the prime Michael moments come onto the pitch. Kante's, even those attacking options of. A Yesebio off the bench, a Ronaldinho, if he's not starting in the team, yeah. can come off and, and really inject his impact into it. Yeah, team near Messi uh, as well. If Cristiano Ronaldo isn't starting, he would typically come on and be a 
super sub in this final 15, 20 minutes. We are playing over two legs as well. So there's plenty of FIFA left to be played as this corner whipped in by the Tiffany Blue icon. Around again, recycled well, finds his way. That's the player who's hyped up, that's come onto the pitch, Ronaldo. Klinger in control, Ronaldo still looks for the cut back, Ronaldo still just trying to pick up any sort of pick and he can in and around the box. That time. Not to pick up anything, Kevin De Bruyne. Good way onto the pitch alongside Ru Hullet, that's part of Messi. That left buoy falls havoc. He has been able to ever since. I think game items have dropped into the game and they've got better and better. My time is... And Cancelo. Popular partnership at the back alongside Ruben Diaz. Cool. Understandably. Like it won't be changed in a long time. Well, you, you never know. We, team of the season right around the corner. The voting currently open for the community team of the season and I'm sure they're... The league specifics are going to be shortly followed as well, so could be a little bit of shake-up coming into these teams, especially as we go towards the latter stages of the season. Playoffs, E World Cup, FIFA e Nations Cup, FIFA e Club World Cup. It won't be long as well until SPQ off the lead pack. on the plane alongside his teammate moving to that team of the season cup head of the way defensively sound last six minutes left of this first opening one hit you have just joined us you are watching the FGS All-Stars be my teammate South America bracket tonight back to Garwitz Cristiano Ronaldo who just about wins a corner it's like they didn't have much possession half time they have done their fair share of attacking Attack of the game, though. Felipe. Teammate Gamboa Lucas, who has just sat back and had an easy ride. He's played a massive part in this grand final. The build up to, I should say, in the semi final. Scored the equaliser. Really well taken finish by R9. One final chance, potentially. To get it, De Bruyne back to Mbappe, looking to turn, last chance, reverse Elastico, that was Felipe trying to showcase that experience that he's had this year, that will do us four. The first leg, it's 2-2 in our opening semi-final. Here on the FGS All-Stars, be my teammate in South America, it is SPQR's Felipe and Gambo Lucas 2, Andreas Bruno 2000 and his pro player teammate, NSE Klinger, 2-2. We will be back after this short break, when we return we'll find out our first team making it through to tonight's grand final. $5,000 on the line. Don't go anywhere. Plenty more to come. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? My name is Dani Fisser, professional FIFA player for Team Gullit and I said, and today I'm going to show you how to use the player look as a pro. Okay, so the first topic is from your fullback to your winger. Okay, so let's break down this first clip. At, at first, you want to learn how to use the player lock, of course. You need to press L3 and R3 at the same time. You want to switch to one of your other players, in this case, the winger, and you do that by flicking your right stick to your winger. Let's look at it. We get the ball with the right back, we player lock and Bappe, and then, of course, the important thing is not to pass it immediately, uh, but to make a run first, because the AI will control the right back. So you don't have to worry about that. Walk into the little space in the middle because that creates a lot of space for the other players as well. Look at who has a lot of space. In this case, it's the striker. Pass it to your other striker because that's the easy choice to score a goal and finish it. So the second topic I want to talk about is to how to use the player lock in the box. We send our striker on a run. We run with our center mid and then the second player lock happens. And in this case, our striker is completely covered. The defender is standing in front of him. 
no space whatsoever. But because of the player lock, we can create the space and score a goal. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. This was Danny Fisher with how to use the player lock as a pro. See you soon. Welcome back to the FGS All-Stars Be My Team, mate. You've just seen the first semi-final conclude. Before we jump into the second one, we have to talk about the PlayStation Tournament's Open Series, where basically PlayStation have created a portal for all of you that are watching right now to have a chance to compete. At whatever level you are, you do not have to be a pro to be involved in weekly, monthly, daily FIFA tournaments for players at all skill levels. The chance to compete against your friends and rivals for a number of unique rewards, in-game currencies, cash prizes, even a PlayStation 5 could be up on the line. Go to compete.playstation.com and sign up your PSN ID today to play now, because that's what these four competitors have done today, Richard, to get to their stage of being in the grand final. Why not get involved? You do not have to be a pro to play in these PlayStation tournaments, do you? No, you, you certainly don't. Uh, there's so many tournaments up for grabs. There's so many tournaments available, Brandon. And you never know, you might see our own tournament on there as well one day. We can uh, certainly keep an eye out for that. S loads of opportunities. Compete.playstation.com to get involved. Back to the action, though, because we're in a very tight and nervy game going into leg number two. Currently two apiece. And I'm uh, sort of seeing and hearing that the game is very, very shortly about to get underway. And just as I say that, we do kick off. Plenty up for grabs. This is the one, Richard. First semi-final hit. If you missed the action, don't worry. It's all square after four goals. 2-2. Two -two. Even Stevens. It's NSC's Klinger. Alongside his teammate. And Andreas Bruno 2000, who was one of the fan cup winners who went through, as we said, the PlayStation tournament's menus and found this tournament. The FGS All-Stars be my team. I had the chance to basically battle alongside hundreds upon hundreds of fellow South Americans in a Swiss-style format. We played five or six games over the evening and did not lose a single game. That deemed him good enough to be here alongside winning a PlayStation 5 and already bagging $1,250 experience. For those players that are in these brackets, Richard, what does it do for them in terms of experience? Because it really is, for some, just the extra push-up, the extra leg-up they need to really say, you know what, I could take this seriously as a pro career and I could really make it as a FIFA pro player. There's just that first run on the ladder and sometimes all you need is a chance, all you need is an opportunity to get yourself noticed, to get yourself motivated and to really show that you can compete at that level. Could be a potential counter-attack from this corner for Klinger. That does well, Ronaldo driving forward. Keep an eye on those runs, they'll be in teed and around the box, Mbappe this time picks up the ball nicely on this far-hand side, Bellingham waits patiently, he's the future star item that makes it into this team alongside Rude Hullet on both sides of the pitch. The 
Good counter attack on the flip side for Team SPQI. It's Renato just back on side. He peeled the run back very well. It's Felipe, the team captain, cuts it back into his teammate, Jambawa. Brilliantly done. That's top quality FIFA. 14 minutes on the clock. A counter attack that they made look so simple. And for the first time across the two legs, they lead by an extra goal. It's the teammate on the screen there of Jambawa Lucas, who isn't here just to sit back and be carried. He's played his part in this team, and that's a really well taken goal, Richard. Yeah, Gamboa's been really good during this series so far. I think he's scored two of the three goals that have been scored here for Team SPQR Felipe. They're in front, and let's see what they can do with a lead now. They've always been fighting back into the game. They've always been having to come from behind. Let's see if they can control this game, what their possession play is like, how they can deal with a different style of pressure because it's completely different from chasing the game compared to being in the dominant position and being in the lead. And for a lot of players, me included, I prefer the chase. I prefer being the one trying to get back into the game. My, my game plan is a lot more straightforward. I know that I need to press, I know that I need to try and win the ball back and put the ball in the back of the net. If I'm the player in the winning position, do I keep on playing as I am? Do I try and hold possession? Do I try and go for the kill? How do I want to play that winning position? Certainly has been a way that they've had to play so far tonight. SPQ has fully played. Here comes Klinger. Teammate Andres Bruno. They've led on two different occasions already tonight, but they've struggled to hold on to a lead. For the first time, I have to chase that game. It's a really tightly knit community here in South America. We were lucky enough last year, Richard, to cover the online era of, of FIFA esports, so to speak. Obviously, an era that continued. Lovely ball over the top. Good Is find it? Mbappe. It's Jambawa, who very nearly added on to his tally of goals that he scored. Mbappe Lucas, the fan cup winner, has been on the end of more goals than his teammate Felipe. Not and he's played a bigger part in this team, but certainly it's up and been accounted for on no doubt the biggest of tournaments he's ever had to play him. But back to the point, there's so many matchups that happen in South America is, is, is the point I want to allude to here, Richard, of yes, in a 1v1 environment. Later on today, we commentate Palanetta Resende. They have played tons of games in a 1v1 format. There is going to be little rivalries there. Yes, they have respect between these two players, as these two will now. Felipe and Klinger, they matched a couple of times last year. They played in the same playoffs, the same qualifiers, one to four in South America. It's going to be that. There's going to be that extra level of competitiveness in these. We might be in a 2v2 environment, but they'll be saying to their fan club and their teammates, look, I've lost, to a, I've lost to this player a lot. I know how we want to play. I know how I want to try and dictate the play. We might be on a different FIFA, FIFA 21 to FIFA 22, but there will still be those same characteristics that are going to carry over for a number of pros. Yeah, absolutely. The, the 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 level of competition might be slightly smaller and slightly sort of less tense, but the the urge and the want to win is even greater, I would say, because you, you're playing for somebody else. You're playing with somebody else's opportunities. When we were watching those tournaments last season, Brandon, it was all 1v1. We we're still in the 1v1 oh, era wow. where you're playing oh, on your own. Wow. That's great play. He's done it, it again. Really is. It's really, really nice. Banged another goal, Richard. It's a big smile from his teammate and captain of this team, Felipe. Even bigger smile from the Sony Fan Cup winner. What a night he is having. First taste of competitive FIFA. First ever live broadcast with commentary. And he's thriving. They were down by two goals on two different occasions. And now they lead by two goals. It was the biggest scoreline cushion we've seen so far in the semi-final. It's all about the extra pass. It's just working that ball across the box. The extra ball, the the pass across the box. Mbappe at the back post was spare and a simple finish. What a start they've had. Two goal cushion. It could be a three goal cushion at this rate. 
Whatever has happened before this, whatever they've been doing to practice for tonight, he has been working wonders. Team SPQ off Felipe. And it's certainly fan cut when a teammate in Gamboa lead by four goals to two at the break. This is where we need to see a change, Rich, on the flip side for Klinger and Andres Bruno. They're two goals down. They've never been in a losing position. And they're a team that, let's be honest, Rich, they've not had much possession. They've not had much control of the games. Here's the, the goals that have gone in. Talk me through them. Yeah, well, the first one, it's very simple. I mean, both goals are, are really quite similar. Simple pass to the back post. It was the ball out wide into R9, which created that angle of opportunity. Ronaldo out wide, very simple. Just got the ball into that corner flag area. Hull it, fired it into R9, and then a simple finish at Mbappe at the back post. They've not created enough. They've not had enough opportunities, and... SBQR, Felipe and Gamboa, Lucas, a good value for their victory. You know, whoever wins this will go into tonight's grand final. Guaranteed two and a half thousand dollars and a shot at the top prize of five thousand dollars today. That's what will be up for grabs if you can make it that far through. Bellingham back to Ronaldo, lovely cut back. This is the start they need, Klinger. Nicely done, a fake cut back inside Mbappe, still just about with it, not too sure really what he wanted to do, I think it was Klinger that time, the captain of this team that was just controlling the possession of Mbappe, he was looking for a combination, he was looking just to, a bit of a shimmy to be honest, of like which way do I go, fake to go left, fake to go right, sometimes I'm just going to click L2 and, and not really do anything, just shield the ball back to the defender, wait for them to try and dive into the tackle, unfortunately, he's got his wires crossed. A little bit there, wasn't quite sure when his teammate was running or the players were triggering runs around him. What's he done? It's a better start from him and his teammate. Brilliant ball back inside, it's a save. Somehow, he's just kept and Andres Bruno out from scoring a goal and bringing it's time for more close, a corner taken short, back to Mbappe finds the feet of Cristiano Ronaldo. It's the red cursor on the top of the head, who's just offside. Of Klinger. They've been a lot more creative, Rich, in this over 15 in the second half. Yeah, they certainly have. They, they've looked to be creative and just a little bit more penetrative, penetrative in their attacks. They've yet to really create something clear cut this could be the opportunity like nice little nutmeg from Mbappe as it gets fed out wide building again Hullet back to Mbappe Rocks run of it back to R9 that's really well taken even better save moments like that that will carry you through to a grand final he did really really well to get down to it quickly the goalkeeper he spread himself really quick down at Hullet's feet and just made it almost impossible unless there was a ball roll or an extra pass to come off. It, it just wasn't going to happen for him. And expect to see formation, tactical, maybe even personnel changes from Team NSE Klinger here and Andre Bruno. Maybe Messi could, could be a player that comes on and gives you just something different. He's a different type of player compared to Mbappe and Pele, R9, because he's not five-star skill moves, five-star weak foot. He's a little bit more predictable in his approach, but a beautiful left foot can curl that into the top corner with Lionel Messi. 62 minutes on the clock. Yeah, I've just seen some of the, the Sony fan cut winners there. Obviously, they want to be in the same luxury of having that PC sets up that these pro players would have had for their streaming or broadcast capacities that they have been involved in the previous FGS All-Star shows that Team SPQR have been involved in. didn't make it very far, unfortunately, in our previous Masters Cups. We'll be hoping that with the prize money today, these fan cup winners look to, to build themselves the best setups. It's an absolute coming together at the back there. And, Again, it's moments like that when the ball's not bouncing, it's not falling, you start to think, is it our day? Only that time, it's in the box. No way through, last 20 minutes to play here. 
uh, following this one we get to see two more heavy hitters in South America go toe to toe but on two different teams Avanta Paolo's Neto will team up with Sony fan club winner Nikino 6x and Inter's Resende the oldest competitors in tonight's broadcast 24 years of age player with so much experience in the world of FIFA esports teams up of AMZ Leo Zira chance cut back inside another brilliant save Ooh. from Schmeichel that one goes for a corner they get one more goal that's also your right you can absolutely confirm that one in the, no one in the box towards the ground final they want to take minutes out of this game and it's going to work for them there's 15 minutes only left to play now you are inviting a press though it's risky Building Mbappe, take it. Elastico cut back inside, little cancel of that one. Back to Pele. Building this one really needs to stick with 10 minutes left, just over. The goal will give them all the confidence. No, and it's another chance. The goal is begging that time, R9 just wide. Has to score. And Ronaldo, it's very simple. That has to go into the back of the net. That has to hit. The, the chances originally come about because of playing the corner all the way back and then they just lost possession but this is the opportunity Pele gets it twist turns Mbappe into Hull it will slow it down for you oh it's got to go in the double tap pass up to him served it up on a plate and R9 out of all the players cannot well, you stick see it in the back of the net the commitment they've made Richard it's the new 3-5-2 that's been hyped about and spoken about a lot there's a the commitment they've made to really go forward in this game. Yes, defensively it could be sound for you. We're speaking of, obviously about E Premier League recent winner in Dami, who actually has got himself a fantastic run in the in the last FGS tournament online. He got himself a top two finish with the Polish and uh, Norwich City slash One Day Esports Pro player. Tundra Esports. They've really gone for this game, and there's there's moments they've had. They've had. That moment there, they've just missed with R9. They've had saves that have been unstoppable from Team SPQR's goalkeeper. They can conclude it now if they are clever enough. Defended well at the back by Mark Kinos. Last 10 minutes, last roll of the dice. Two goals needed if there's ever any chance an extra time. A place we went two times last week in North America. Ball towards the back post. Ronaldo will be there. Cuts it back inside, and it's just too much for the ongoing runner. With what, 10, 10 minutes left to play, including a couple of minutes injury time. Th there is time left, but th they have to win this ball back and they have to win it back now if they've got any hope of turning this game around. You can see what Lupe and Gambaro are trying to do. They, they want to keep possession in some ways. When they get to this area, they naturally feel the pressure to play for, to look for a through ball. Nine times out of ten, they've been losing it. And just giving possession back to Klinger. Andreas Bruner nicely done with the ball roll there, finds Mbappe, look at the space, look at the time for Ronaldinho. To cut back inside to take even more seconds out of this game. Ronaldinho on his own, that is unbelievable composure again from Gambayo Lucas. A fan cut winner who really looks in his element, Richard. He scored not tappings, not easy goals, he's got a handful of them. And that one there from Ronaldinho, fake to go back inside, came back the other, threw in a little reverse elastico to say, why not? And they're on their way to a grand final. Best goal in this matchup is that one finds the back of the net, but it's too little too late here. Johan Cruyff puts it away for Team NSE Klinger, MMG Klinger. You name it, it doesn't matter, because they'll be eliminated. There we have it, they're on their way. That is your grand final, or one of your grand finals, I should say, in the bag. It's SPQR's Felipe and Gambo Lucas that make it into tonight's grand final. Commiserations to Andreas Bruno 2000 and NSC Klinger. They crash out in the semi-finals. There's plenty more action to come here in the FGS All-Stars Be My Team. We're off for a quick break. When we get back, you're joined by our very own Rachel Stringer and Manchester City's Ryan Pessoa to preview the next semi-final. We'll see you in a few minutes.
Hey guys, this is Levy again. I'm a professional FIFA esports player for the team Gullit, and today I'm gonna do my second masterclass about skill moves. A lot of people use the reverse elastico to dribble past the opponent, but in this case, I use the reverse elastico to create space and get an easy chance on goal. I get a cutback to my center mid. Um, here I could have chosen for the finesse shot, but obviously that's not a 100% chance, so I try to reach my striker. And when I reach my striker, um, most of the times I'm thinking about performing the reverse elastico. The way you perform it in this case is because I dribble upwards, you put your right stick from the left side, halfway to the right side, then it will perform you the reverse elastico. And as you can see here, uh, an easy chance on goal. The second skill move I want to show you guys is the Makidi cancel. In this case, I have some space with my right winger. I managed to get inside the box and I watched my opponent and as you can see he was very aggressive with the center back. So I want to get the ball to my left winger, striker or cam because they are in a 3 versus 1 situation in this case. So I chose to do the Makidi cancel. It opens up a lot of space for my striker and my cam. Um, a very good pass into the box and unfortunately no finish but I get a pen from it. I've been Leffy, player from the team Gullit. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my second masterclass on skill moves. See you soon on the pitch. The FIFA Global Series All-Stars Be My Teammate is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Yes, guys, of course, you are watching the FGS All-Stars event here tonight. This is obviously second of three events we have. We're bringing you these in April, of course. But as always, we'd love you just to join in these conversations using that hashtag on your screen, FGS22, and you can find us on all the good social channels, of course, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. And it's a way for you guys to keep up to date as well, because remember, we have eChampions League next week, and then, of course, we have the Team of the Season Cup as well. We see these 2v2 Masters team coming your way at the end of April. So much FIFA coming your way. Ryan Pessoa is alongside me as always. Ryan, what did you make of that one? I mean, Gamma Lucas, he's our FIFA community member. He had a not to be desired setup there, but he was quality on the pitch, wasn't he? Yeah, definitely. He held his own. He scored some great goals. Linked up really well, as I said. These players, I doubt they would have had tons of time to practice if any time at all, but the way they played was unbelievable and some great goals as well. Yeah, just think what they will actually do if they get a good quality chair and probably good internet yeah. connection. I really want them to invest in that as well. So, Gambo, Luca, I think uh, if you do get the top prize money, that'd be awesome to see. Well, let's um, have a little bit of a deep dive then, Ryan, into that 5-3 win by SPQR Felipe in this analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Yes, of course. It was Team SPQR Felipe up against Team and it was the latter who broke the deadlock 
in the first leg. It was a ball in, whipped in CR7. When you see him leap up, up against most defenders, you know it's going to be a goal, and that's what it was. And it puts them 1-0 up. But it was a quick response here from Felipe Ngambo and Lucas. They built up well to the edge of the box there. Played into Arn and Ronaldo, a reverse elastico, a shot in at the near post to make it 1-1. And there was a response early on in the second half. It was Klinger again to try and take the lead. You see the triggered run there from Arnan Ronaldo. Lacroquette cancelled passing, build up play, and it was the man who was triggered. It was a red time finish, so very fortunate to find the back of the net there. But again, you've got to take the luck when it comes your way. And yet again, a quick fire response from Team SPQR Felipe. A ball given away in defence there, pounced on by Bellingham, played across there, and this was a calm, composed finish there from Gamboa Lucas with R9 Ronaldo to put it into the top corner. 2-2 going into the second leg, all to play for, but this time it was Felipe or Team Felipe to break the deadlock and we saw, we're going to see a similar theme anyway, build up down the touchline, the byline, scoop turned in from R9, played across for a simple finish for Mbappe to make it 3-2 and they made their lead count and gave themselves a safety blanket, a cushion as they build up again with CR7 on the week. You see they're controlled from Ruud Hullet. Brought Arna and Ronaldo back on side. A very simple pass across there for Mbappe to make it 4-2. And that gave them the healthy lead that they needed going into the second half. And the latter stages, again, it was built up here from Ronaldinho. Gambo or Lucas building up. And it was a turn back inside. Some fantastic skill moves. A reverse elastico over the goalkeeper. 5-2. And that was game over in that game. There was a last minute consolation, but it didn't mean too much. We can see the bracket here. Rachel, SPQR, Felipe and Gambo Lucas advanced into the final, whether we're up against either Atlanta, Atlanta's Paolo Neto and Mekinio or Inter's Resende and AMZ Leo Zero, who will be playing shortly. Yeah, well, let's uh, go into that next matchup. But then, Ryan, you mentioned a couple of our pro players there. Paolo Neto, we saw him a couple of weeks ago as well. He obviously was a champion in our FGS Masters Cup. He's up against the Inter Resende. Um, again, they were playing against each other there. What do we know firstly about Paolo Neto? Again, he's on great form, isn't he? Recent EMLS champion. How do you think he'll get on tonight? Yeah, as you said, he's coming in on great form, um, recently even winning the, the Masters Cup, which was a, a 2v2 format. But as you said, he won the EMLS Cup in 2022, so he has that know-how and, and the knowledge of how to win tournaments. But he's a player that's been competing for a number of years now. You can see on the screen some of his accolades. FIFA 20, the Summer Cup South American winner, and also finishing at third place in the FGS 21 South American qualifiers, number five, which was the last qualifier in that region, coming into FIFA 22. So he took that experience and those performance levels into FIFA 22, where he's performed fantastically well, as you mentioned. Coming in on great form, and again, his his opponent, Inter Resende, aged 24. He's been a player that's been around the scene for a number of years now, qualifying for the World Cup in FIFA 19, performing fantastically well there. But the key year for him was FIFA 21. As you can see on the screen, the South American qualifier, number three, champion. Number four, champion, Ilo Bitadora 2021, champion again. He's a three-time winner in his own right. And again, these two players coming up against each other, you mentioned before, they played in the FGS Masters final. So there could be some redemption or redemption arc for a certain day to try and get some payback. Yeah, I mean, they're such quality players. So, you know, it's great that we've got to see them kind of in quick succession as well. And for them, obviously, it's helping them in these high quality 2v2 matchups. But can we separate these two? Last time, we saw lots of extra times, didn't we, in our, our week one All Stars events. Do you think we may see it going that way in this matchup? You know, I always say with these competitions, of course, you're playing with somebody that you might not have had any knowledge of playing with beforehand. So I always think that it's either going to be a blowout scoreline or it's going to be really close. And I, I just, it's hard to separate. It kind of depends how the community player performs. You saw Gamboa Lucas with his performance in the first game, sort of separating the two. Again, it's hard to predict. I want to go with Paolo Neto just because of the form coming into it. But yeah, it could go either way. Are you going a blowout scoreline from Paolo Neto then? Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. Blowout scoreline for Paolo Nettle. OK, Ryan has spoken. Let's throw it up then to Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley because semi-final two has started. It has indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel and Ryan. We're jumping straight into this one now as we join it live. And it's Paolo Neto's Team Atlanta United, he'll call it, against Inter's Resende. Ooh. Two football clubs going head-to-head. -head. What a start we've had minutes in. 
And Resendo, he thinking, this is a deja vu that I do not want to expect. Just weeks ago, they played in the FGS Masters Cup, a tournament where there was the same level of cash on the line. And it was Atlanta United's Palonetto and his teammate and Vinny that had the last laugh. That is not the start. The Inter's Resende and his Fan Cup teammate in this one. In AMZ, Leo Zira, 7.30. Wow, what a start. Yeah, really interesting goal as well, because it, it looked as though there was a, like maybe a deflection on the way through. The goalkeeper didn't really go for it, didn't dive for it at all. Great start, though, for Paolo Neto. Team Paolo Neto, I should say. See, brief match is a 2v2 environment. Building up Pele, lovely close control, dribbling, oh wow. Oh, Resende with the hard work, his fan cup teammate with the easiest of tap-ins. It was a great run regardless. And straight away, we're all square again. This is the thief we've come to expect and see. And that's his teammate that's very calm and composed, Leo Zira, who came through the Sony fan cup on a PlayStation 5 on the way to get into tonight's broadcast. But I just wanted to give this match a little bit of hype and preview that it deserves, Richard, because these are two heavyweights that last year they didn't face in the Global Series. They never faced at all in FIFA Esports because they played on two different consoles. And with PlayStation becoming an exclusive partner in many ways with everything in the FGS as of late, we're getting to see these two play each other a bit more. Yes, not in a 1v1 environment, but still 2v2 with their resident teammates are a fan cup winner. It still provides that little bit of excitement that we haven't seen in past years. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I mean, also the the accolades just stacking up from these two, the multiple wins, multiple victories, just the, the overall att attainment and achievement that these two and, and the level that these two are playing at. If you're the teammate, you're going in with Resende or you're going in with Paolo Neto, whether it's Mequinos or AMZ Leo Zara, you have to be at that level or, or you are going to be sort of a weak link in these teams. You are going to feel as though you're letting that other, the, your pro player down. Comes Resende and his teammate, lovely done. Oh, that was so good. Referees pulled it back for a penalty, to be fair. The ball roll was enough just to tease Van der Sar into the foul up steps the fan cut winner it's a brilliant save from the fan cut winner on the flip side for team Paolo Neto a rule square penalty 22 minutes in save two goals between the two what a start this second semi-final is for us as it is an attack on the flip side that has been defended superbly well just looking at both of these players individually Richard in terms of Paolo Neto, Paolo Neto sorry and Resenda, I'd say in terms of the player in form right now, you'd have to you'd have to lean on Palanetto. He's won an EMLS Cup. Yes, that was in a 1v1 environment. He's got the, the confidence boost of a Masters Cup win literally just weeks ago now. For me, I come into this one thinking, yes, Resende is an older player. He's got a lot more experience in the FIFA scene. But in terms of FIFA 22 accolades, achievements and confidence, I think Palanetto gets my vote. I mean, Paolo Neto, he's, he's been playing at such a good level globally uh, as well. You, you remember FGS4, the tournament that Zazinho went on to win, Brandon, in Paris in FIFA 20. He was at that tournament, he was playing there. But we also have Resende on the one of the final global events before the global pandemic. Finished second with 11s, himself and Ethan, uh, in that grand final against Complexity. So on the last couple of events that we had before we were region sort of based, these two were there and these two were playing in final days and championship Sundays. Again, it's a pleasure for us this year to be able to say that both of these two players will be coming to that FGS team of the season cup. Which won't be this weekend, it's next weekend. The Champions League group stages live this weekend, of course, in this very place where you are watching the FGS All-Stars be my teammate broadcast. Pele is just about on side. This is an attack from Resendo. Looks to come forward. Still ball bouncing around in the box. Pele, up. great feet. Cuts inside. Henderson volleys. Mbappe can't offload it into his teammate Cristiano Ronaldo. 
And very nearly. This is Resende. It's Tima. AMZ. Leo Zira. Finding their way into the lead. They'll feel hard done by after missing a penalty from the spot. Palanetto on the build-up, timed it, green off the woodwork. Oh, wow, what a start we've had here, what a start. This semi-final's been full of goals, what a ball that is, by the way, caught oh, by Pele. How can Solo, Mr. Reliable is always in at fullback. It looked like it was just curling away from the, the fullback, just didn't quite get enough whip on it as it went to... Fire around from left to right, all the way across the pitch like a cannon, but really, really good start. And, and look, we have to remember as well, it ended with a, a reasonably big scoreline that first game, Brandon, that we saw in the first semi final between Klinger and Andres Bruno and SPQR Felipe and Gamboa Lucas. But at the interval of those two games, it was 2 2 the scoreline after the first leg of action. So we're going that way for another really tightly contested first leg of action. What a game it has been, by the way. That's your first half of four across the two semi-finals. That is what you want to see in terms of the possession stats, 51 to 49. The XG has been in the favour of Team Resenda. I mean, they had a penalty that they missed at the halfway point. You cannot forget about yeah, that, that counts as, as one. we jump back yeah. into the game again. But both teams have had unbelievable chances so far in this one, Richard. I expect loads more goals to come across the next couple of legs, and especially in the first leg here. Obviously, we are playing on FIFA Ultimate Team, where the team captains, aka the pro players, would have had control of the teams and have built them within their choose. And expect to see prime icon moments in there, as you've seen, future star, Bellingham. Michael goalkeepers at either end of the pitch. Michael van der Sar, the list goes on. Hello. To time that run well, Mbappe would have been just about on offside. It's holded well. Keep an eye on the, the player icons above. The player said it's Mbappe. Back to Pele, cut back, Ronaldo does well, twists and turns, it's great confidence we must say, from Leo Zira. It's one of those chances as well, and at the near post, you've twisted your man, you've got the opportunity at the near post, you're probably taking that shot thinking, there's a good chance this will go in, you know. Just on that, I mean, it, compared to, I'm not saying last week we didn't see the, the confidence there, but these competitors that have gone for online qualification to be here on the PlayStation tournaments menu tabs have come into this and they're oozing of confidence. They just want to go out there and show just how good they are, Richard. If we didn't know which icon was which icon, I think this week, last week you could, you would probably be able to tell a little bit more of, of which is the pro and which is the community member. I don't think this week it's that easy to tell. Yes, there's moments of absolute genius from the pro players, just like that first goal from Team Inter Resende, but for the most part, they've held their own, the community members, whether that's Andres Bruno, Gamboa Lucas in the first game, or here, Mequinos and Leo Zara. Absolutely. The quality of these players are at the top and to be completely honest the pro players that are in tonight's bracket have probably helped inspire a handful of the players that have attempted qualification in march where this talk was up for grabs a chance to be part of a ten thousand dollar prize pool live on broadcast and opportunity to win a playstation 5 for qualifying two of our four sony cup fan what is that been able to do? Long ball forward, finds the path of R9. This is Resendo. That's teammate on the hump. Robert Cole that will take them into the lead. 22 minutes away from the break. Well played short into Hakimi. That's prime R9. Resende in control. Teasing. Last to go in. One more back to 
CR7, Resende does his best he can, back to Hull it. Oh, lovely skill, cancel. Still just about, La Croqueta, look at the confidence oozing. Oozing from these two. And somehow, we're still at a 1-1 one, one scoreline. Really such I, a I would have good understanding, Richard, of just the in-game mechanics for, for each individual moment there with the players you just saw, whether that was Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo and Nazaro in that position, Resende and Leo Zira. Both just knew exactly what they wanted to do there, and as you rightly said, somehow did not find a way through and score in a goal. Hello, back to Mbappe, Resende. He's possessed, naughty tackle there from Jude Bellinger, back up on his feet, there could be a counter-attack on him for Paolo Neto. He's in control here with Cristiano Ronaldo towards the back post, into Pele, it's harsh, but it's cruel. And sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles in FIFA. That is... small margins, epitomised... In a goal, right there, you feel as though you're, you're you're flying. You feel as though you're doing well, and then quickly a mistake, a moment. We're going to see it here down this left-hand side. 78 minutes on the clock. Just whipped into that back post, and a, a, look, it was a really good header at that back post from Pele as well. But Paolo Neto not really celebrating that goal because they know that yes, it has been against the runner play and maybe find themselves fortunate to be in a winning predicament at the moment. And again, yeah, absolutely, it gets to run a play, but it goes to show how clinical they can also be. I, I wouldn't, I'd actually say how clinical you have to be, Brandon, because you can create chances, you can have high XGs, but the hardest bit is putting that ball in the back of the net. You need to have that. You, you need to have that killer instinct. You need to have that mentality of I'm going to capitalise on mistakes. I'm going to do everything I can to get goals, whether that's cutbacks, finesse shots, back post crosses. No matter what it is, even all, the ugly ones count. Any, any goal. If the ball hits the back of the net, it puts a number one in that top left corner and it can send you through to a final. Well done what there a by Van der Sar again. Resende did his best to find the chance. Ball around the box, Mbappe, have a great save, Van der Sar, that one. Just about kept in by Rude Hullet. Looks to be the last chance of the first half in this semi-final. Ball back across, Mbappe, off the leg of Marquinhos. And we're all square with pretty much the last kick of the game if there is just enough time for one more attack plus additional time. It was 2-2 at the halfway point of our first semi-final. It looks to be exactly the same here, Richard, with four new players, or maybe not. Not yet. Multi tackle that was so... Penalty? So! Last minute from Ruben Diaz. How on earth has he got away with that? That has to be a penalty. Van der Sar has gone from hero to zero, by the way. Couple of outstanding saves. And then on that corner, he was nowhere to be seen. He's run all the way to the back post. He's out of position. He's out of his goal. And a, a tapping in the end to put Resende back at a level playing field, going into leg number two. What a game. How on earth? How on earth? Ruben Diaz got away with that one without having a final touch on the player. That is going to do us for the halfway point in this first semi-final. We're back in a few minutes. We'll be crowning our two grand finalists. Don't go anywhere. What's going on, guys? Ulelito here, I'm back. Now, in this Messi class, I will be showing you the attacking abilities that comes with the 4-5-1 second variation. We're starting with the wing here. We're getting the ball into the middle and we have the ball with our right CM and then turning it on to our central CM. And as you see here, we have the perfect triangle. So 
If I were to pass it to my left CM here, I can go for a direct pass to my other CM again because I have this triangle and the sentiment that he is selecting, he can't do anything because he can't put, put pressure when he basically is defending his three midfielders in the middle. The thing I do here though, with my central center mid, I'm passing it to my left center mid. And as I showed you on the tactics before, my left center mid is always unbalanced. And why? That's because I want him to make a run in behind to be able to maybe get the ball in a later stage of the attack. And the thing that happens then is that I'm doing an L1 pass with my left center mid, which makes him create a run in behind afterwards. And we find the pass back to our center center mid, as you see here. Finding it to the right center mid. The thing that happens here is that I see that my striker is in the middle. And why is he? Yeah, because I used him on stay central in my instructions. So he's staying central. He is the target man. I found my left center mid and he's almost scoring because of it. Thank you so much for watching my masterclass. I appreciate that a lot. And yeah, see you on the pitch. Well, welcome back to the FGS All-Stars. Be my teammate before we jump into this next game. If you have been enjoying what you've seen here today and you would like to see more of this, not this weekend, but next weekend, we bring you three days of 2v2 FIFA Esports action live in this very place and over on YouTube. FGS Team of the Season Cup will be live with all of our 16 Masters teams joining the 16 teams that qualified from the FGS Open back in December. We cannot wait for that. But on the build up to it, we have tournaments like this, the FGS All-Stars, Be My Teammate, presented by the PS5 Tournaments tab. Richard Buckley joins myself, Brandon Smith, for the second half of this semi-final. Richard, we want more of the same from what we've been seeing here in South America so far. We certainly do. It's been end-to-end -end games. It's been action-packed goals galore as we're about to get into the second leg of action. 2-2 the scoreline between Team Atlanta United, Palo Neto and Inter Resende. They're the pro players. Two community members as well on these teams to potentially take in home $5,000 if they are successful in this game and the grand final. If you haven't been following this tournament format, it's four pro players part alongside four Sony Fan Cup winners that have battled out in different tournaments across the last couple of months. The chance to win a PlayStation 5 and also to be involved in tonight's bracket where we have said $5,000 goes to the winning team. But the great thing about this is the Fan Cup winner gets to keep all of the cash. All the prize money will go to our competition uh, fan Cup winners there. The pro players are just here to offer support and guidance, and more importantly, to showcase just how good they are in a 2v2 environment. Alanetto. His teammate. Nate Quinn. 06x. They 
Started pretty well, to be honest, in the first leg. And then, I'll be honest, they just sort of phased their way through. And if it wasn't for brilliant saves from the goalkeeper and maybe moments of fortune, a little bit of luck, I have to give credit to Resende's team, Richard. They were on top. They created a lot. They had a lot of the ball in the box. They were just missing their final piece of the puzzle on two or three occasions. Maybe they can find it right now. Cut back inside. Brilliantly well done. Tapping for Pele. Speak of goals, they shall appear. And what a finish it was. Pele knocking into an empty net. Came off the sort of the, the save, rebound from the goalkeeper. In the end there. Resende. And Leo Zara, 7.30 just seem to be clicking really well in around the box. They're both confident enough, Richard, to also bat their ability in those moments. Some of the combinations we've seen and confidence that's been oozing out of Those players, I think the, the words you said tonight, which I'll have to echo again, is you haven't been able to see clearly who the pro is and who the fan cup winner is. The, the quality from both players in these two two teams has just been so good here in South America. Bellingham, La Croqueta, finds R9, Hullet might go on his own, he will! Great save, and the Saar corner. Coming from Team Palanetto. Yes, around the edge of the box for Hullet. He's waiting, Hullet chest it down. Back to goal, it is Palanetto. Marquinhos being controlled by. Quino, six. Able to make anything happen that time. Lovely ball forward, it was a bit ambitious from that far out. Intercepted well by Jao Cancelo, his team of the year in-game item. A nice little ball, wasn't it? Looking for Rude Hullet, bursting through midfield, but just couldn't quite get the weight of the pass. It needed too much curl, too much to go right for it, that through ball. Couldn't quite get it spot on, but a good attempt. Shows the confidence that they're playing with. The thing that's been so good on this side is how quick these two players have been able to gel. Did it with a couple of the, the duos. There's clearly been practice you can see from some of these 2v2 teams that have come into tonight's broadcast, knowing that there is some serious money on the line. And that they want to do everything they can to help their fan cup winners get through to get the hands of some silverware and some really solid cash. Five thousand dollars for players will be a great start to their pro career. This is an, an avenue they would like to exploit and push forward. Opportunities that the likes of PlayStation are offering players all around the world. The PS4 tournament's going back to goal. He's on a building nicely. This could be a gift. Pele trips over himself, and fortunately, there isn't a chance for Team Palonetto. Remember, you win this, you're in a grand final, you'll be taking on SBQR's Felipe and Gamboa Lucas, who had a great semi-final. They were down by two goals on two different occasions, but were able to bounce their way back forward. Cruised the three-goal cushion that ended only as a two, but nevertheless, they found their feet in the second leg. They'll be waiting patiently for the winner. This second semi-final here. And that's where you'll find a lot of these games do open up in the second leg because of the the relative newcom sort of uh, experience of the competition winners of the community members. The the experience that they have to show does come out in that first leg, and in the second leg they can enjoy themselves a little bit more. Well, Carney there I was looking for Cristiano Ronaldo's feet. This did a bounce. Perfect way in the end. A big whip. Portugal fullback who's out of position. Now there is a lot of space on that left-hand side. Slightly rushed. 
That might do us for half time here in the second leg of this semi final number two. A perfect start for the oldest player in tonight's bracket, 24 years of age, Captain Resendo of Inter Esports. One of those master teams that have been invited to the team of the season cup. We did preview. That's half time here. But still, so much up for grabs. You can see the score at the halfway point. 45 minutes away from finding out who will be in tonight's grand final here in South America. Don't expect that to be the final scoreline, though. This is the only goal to talk about so far, Richard. Yeah, it was nice build up play. Quite simple. Simple pass across the box. The rebound bounced off of Van der Sar. Pele was at the back post to tap in from close range. As we said, uh, showing us that grin that he always seems to do. When he finds himself in a winning position, we can have a look at the numbers as they currently stand at the halfway point. Possession very slightly in the favor of Paolo Neto. However, that passing accuracy will be worrying him a little bit. The bottom start on both sides of the screen, 89 and 85 percent passing accuracy you'll want that to be above 90 percent for both teams however inters rescende and leo zara find themselves in the driving seat at the moment 45 minutes away from a grand final appearance and what would you say is a respectable sort of past accuracy stat to be having at a 2v2 pro level obviously take away the the content of today's broadcast but looking ahead to the fgs team of the season cup I mean in a in a 1v1 pro environment we've seen what 60 to 96 97 percent pass accuracy from a handful of pro players in the past in a 2v2 there is more I guess opportunity for error more opportunities for mistakes to be made with two players controlling every single pass what would you say do you reckon at that top pro level will be the the average pass accuracy stat 94 percent or is that too low or too high I think Anything above, I would say 92%. You might be like, oh, that's a weird number, but I think sort of 90 to 95 is, is what one in, one in 10 passes that's going wrong for you. I think when you double it up as well, you should always have an easier pass because your teammate should be creating space for you. They should be creating a, a, a lane or an avenue or coming short or giving you an extra pass that the AI might not offer you in a 1v1 scenario. So uh, I think anything above 90% is a good number to aim for see how those numbers do change as this half does break down ever so slightly Ruben Diaz has to be careful there eventually gets the ball back to Van der Sop team of the area in game by Tim has been loved by the pros and the casual community the team of the season just around the corner you expect to see who else could find their way into these teams maybe in a full back position on the bench or who knows even as a starter future stars Jude Bellingham did just that a few months ago. His in-game item, which has been loved just as much as well as these Team of the Year players. It's ended not so well by Team Palanetto. Here comes Pele now. Could be a chance for a bit of a grieving space. It was a Lacroqueta fumbled, in all honesty, from Pele. It was said they in control, that now they're on the back foot. up against it Paul pass though trying to play the ball from out wide to in and it's a hard pass to play because you, you see the play where you want to play it to but as soon as you see that pass and it opens up you've got two defenders who are instantly trying to mark it who are trying to make sure they've got bodies on the line perfect example of it right there two attempted passes both intercepted good feet oh nine great save and the Sar pause again 26 minutes left to play here For the tournament and competition integrity, we will hide the, the player tactics and changes that will be made just to keep it fair on all levels for our pro players and fan cup winners. We speak about Palanetto, interesting fact, he's got a massive, massive sort of poster artwork behind him. It's been part of his normal setup for the last couple of years, Richard. Still jealous of it myself. Yeah, it's sort of a a mural isn't it <laughs> what's behind him there the uh the paolo netto i mean look i'm sure if you could you could contact the, the right people and you can get a brandon smith b smith esports mural behind you 
Um, I'm not too sure how it would look on camera, but <laughs> if that's what you want to do, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's someone out there who could make it for you. He's locked in. He's the Brazilian. He's on screen now. He's a Quite the year so far as Palanet. So he's been playing this field for Atlanta United for quite a few years. He was an MLS winner just a few months ago. Jump back into the game now. 26 minutes left to play. He's having to defend the corner of his teammate. Finesse from distance. Oh, Resende with Joe Bellingham. A player we said who's really hit the ground running. Will allow his team and his teammate Leo Zera 7.30 to have a two goal cushion for the first point at any time across the two semi-finals and it looks to be deja vu and a bit of a copycat in terms of how the game went in the end in our last semi-final Richard when there just began to be that gap in class and gap in quality and, and these games do tend to, to get away from you especially when you're trying to chase a game especially when you're trying to get back into it could be the fifth here, Pele inside the box, cuts it back to Mbappe, great save from Van der Sar. He's been outstanding all night long. Chance you do not think will go in. Couldn't see like they do. 20 minutes away, we need a serious response. From Palanetto and his teammate. And Quino. We need to see the shots and the chances. Six to one, it looked like. They have been in the driving seat. They're not quite done yet. They want a third goal. They want to bury this game. Oh, nine. Brilliantly well done. Pele! There's the nail in the coffin. And I think you can say a big GG to Inter's Resendo. This time, he will get the last laugh. Just three weeks ago, he lost in a Masters Cup final. Two. Paolo Neto, this time he wants to put it right. And what a time to do it as well. Final few minutes again, just those, those couple of moments, those couple of opportunities that come for you, being clinical, being cutting edge when you need to be. Resende and Leo Zara 5-2 up at the moment. It would take a heroic mammoth effort from Team Paolo Neto to turn this game around. I think he knows him more than anyone. I think you have for Resende and Palanetto is they're two very experienced players when it comes to finals. They've been in a lot of finals, both of them. And on both sides of a win and a loss. Something that Resende at this moment in time will be taken into tonight's final. Let's be curious, Felipe, where them two have actually got a lot of experience and, and passed memories between the two of them they matched up quite a few times in the 1v1 late of the FTS season last year both one qualifiers Felipe and Resendo Resendo as we know was a comfortable wheel of the Torres winner last year ball across the box finds his save I know it does it Ruben Diaz just about gets there I mean, I'm not surprised that they've both won tournaments when you look at the quality that they possess. In such a stacked region uh, as well, South America has some of the best talent, the, the best sort of, the pool of talent there. It, it, it's incredible for the players that come out of there. I often, I talk to a lot of sort of the, the European players and we're, we're catching up recently. Um, chatting to them at the E Premier League, and <laughs> it's funny. Tom Lease, uh, obviously, huge presence, plays for XL. He said, There's nothing scarier than a Brazilian or South American player that you don't really know, or you, you might not have heard about. It could be their first ever LAN at a LAN event. Because you can guarantee that if they've qualified through 
the South American region and they're at Atlanta then, they are going to be incredible. I mean, Felipe was one of those names which looked no further. Finesse from distance into the hands of Van der Sar. And at 18 years of age, he was competing at Foot Champions Cup, so just 16 was Felipe. Resendo. Maybe a few more years older, but that's experience he's had there. That's full time in our second semi final, and it's a nice win, a very comfortable second leg performance from Resendo and his teammate in AMZ, Leo Zara, who will find their way to tonight's grand final. It's commiserations to Atlanta United's Paladin, so we'll see him in a few weeks at the Team of the Season Cup. But for now, it's four teams down to two. It's a grand final coming up after this break. $5,000 on the line. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes' time. Hey guys, my name is Max. I'm a professional FIFA player for Complexity Gaming, and today I'm going to teach you how to use the 4 1 2 and 2 narrow second variation. So, for our first pattern here, we're going to be looking at how we use fullbacks to create space when attacking. Once we win the ball back, the first thing that I do is I trigger my fullback on a run manually. So now you see my fullback at the top of the screen. He's running down the right side, and so is my striker. That leaves two attackers down the right side, and he only has one left back. Once I recognize this, I have the ball with my center mid and we just play the ball. Now here in this position, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five guys running, darting into the box and he has five defenders that can cope with it. So I look into the box, I see there's no one there initially, so I have to recycle the play and go backwards. An open pass comes back, my center mid drops back, and then we're going to just keep passing. There's, there's an open guy almost always in the narrow around the box. As we mentioned earlier, we got tackled, but the key thing is that we managed to advance the ball into his box off of like a five second attack. Hey guys, thank you for watching my 4-1-2-1-2 masterclass video. See you on the pitch. Well, welcome back, guys. As always, join in then with the conversation on social media using this hashtag FGS22. Basically, everywhere on social media tells you about the FIFA Global Series. It keeps you up to date, of course. And one of our big events is coming your way in just two weeks' time. The team of the Season Cup, of course, and we get to see so many more great 2v2 FIFA duos go head to head. Of course, we'll have the, the Masters teams, which you'd have seen playing all throughout March, come together there with the qualifiers from that Team of the Season Cup in December. There's a Team of the Season Open, of course. And yeah, keep up to date on all of our social channels. You've got Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Well, there we go, Ryan Pessoa. 
Both our semi-finals now done, and you got that one a little bit wrong, didn't you? You thought Palinetto was going <laughs> to storm away, and actually it was the opposite. It was Resende storming away in that second leg. I don't think any of us expected 3-0 in that second leg. Yeah, I thought you were going to let me off there, but at least I did I did nope. get it right in terms of the goals scored. It was, it was sort of a blur. There was a lot of goals, but yeah, I did get the prediction wrong. But yeah, fantastic performance. I felt as if they deserved... They could have scored a lot more as well in that second leg. Yeah, well, I want your thoughts after this analysis presented by PlayStation Tournament of semi-final two. It was 5-2, of course, in the end, to Resende over Paolo Neto. Ryan, talk us through all those goals right now. Yes, of course, it was Team Paolo Neto partnering up with Mekinio up against Inter's Resende and AMZ Leo Zara. And again, this game, it was a rematch between the two pro players who competed in a 2v2 tournament recently. And it was Paolo Neto breaking the deadlock early on. I thought my prediction was going to become correct there. It was a, a rash pull out of the defender. I believe Ruben Diaz was dragged out of position for an easy finish for Mbappe. But there was a res response very shortly after. Great build-up play in the box. Passing around there from Team Resende. And the man himself, Resende, playing or doing the speed, speed boost down towards the byline with Pele for a simple finish across the goal there for R9 Ronaldo. And there was a goal in the second half there. Paolo or Team Paolo Neto across in at the back post. You can see Pele making the run headed across goal there for a great headed finish to give them the 2-1 lead. But there was an equaliser at the end of the first leg kept in. Barely there by Ruud Hullet. And the goalkeeper coming to, towards to try and catch across in no man's land. And it was a shot from Mbappe deflected off the defender into the bottom corner. 2-2 going into the second leg now. All to play for. But it was Team Resende scoring early on in that second leg there. A great run. A great pass across there. Fantastic save. But again, an, a simple, easy finish for Pele with an open goal to give them the 1-0 lead. 3-2 up on aggregate now as we go into the second leg. And it was a corner here. Passed out to Bellingham with a fantastic green time finesse shot from the edge of the box, giving the keeper no chance. 4-2 now, again, giving them that safety blanket, that cushion in order to try and see the game out and see the game out is what they've done here. A counter attack build up there from Arnaud Ronaldo. Roulette, a pass through ball into Pele, shot across goal, 5-2, game, set and match. And it will be Team Resende going into the final as we see the bracket now. Team Resende up against Team SPQR Felipe, who is partnered with Gamboa Lucas. And of course, Resende with AMZ Leo Zara. So, Rachel, I want to ask you now, your prediction. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, after what I've just seen there, Resende, I think he was kind of like a bulldozer, wasn't he, in that leg number two. But, Ryan, what was quite interesting between both those semi-finals, they kind of both followed the same narrative. Both yeah. the eventual winners, they went one goal down, didn't they, in leg one, and then they kind of pulled it back in leg two to become eventual winners. 5-3, obviously, the first scoreline, and then 5-2. Yeah. So, again, quite similar in scorelines. But would you say the fact that, you know, maybe both of these teams like to start off a little bit slower and then they kind of get into their rhythm? Yeah, I'd say the key thing in, in both the games is they, they try, well, for me anyway, when, when you watch the, the way they played, they try to see how the other person attacks with the other team attacks. But again, we've seen some early goals, which sort of sets the tempo a little bit. But the team that seems to concede early on seems to get back into the game and ends up winning. So again, we've seen, what is it? 5-3 and 5-2. So that is, oh my God, it's been a while since having a score. 15 goals across the two <laughs> games. This, in all honesty, I would be shocked if we saw that many goals in the final. But yeah, I think it's going to be more tighter than, than what we've seen in the semi-finals. Ryan, which pairing looks more ruthless in, in your opinion, just after what we've seen tonight? Do you know what? I'm actually going to... I'm going to say Team Felipe, but that's just because... And when you say more ruthless, I thought Team Resende could have scored a lot more in that leg. I felt as if they let them off a little bit. It could have ended seven or eight towards the latter stage. I saw Sam Maximum brought on as a sub, and they had a lot of chances at the end to, to try and put the nail in the coffin even more than they did already. But I think Felipe or Team Felipe have a good chance to win this as well. I mean, I'm sure we're going to see a ruthless Resende as well, Ryan Pessoa. Felipe is not going to have it all his own way. Well, this is our final, of course, of our second week of our FGS All-Stars teammate event. And without further ado, shall we throw it up to the boys? We've got Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley ready to cast their eye across this final. I mean, I think Resende is going to be ruthless and Ryan thinks Felipe is going to be ruthless. So, boys, who's ruthless in your eyes? 
It's a great question. It really is a great question, this one, because there's revenge on the line here as well, because these two, as you rightly said, Ryan Pessoa, they played just a few weeks ago in a 2v2 environment. So there's a bit of something there. And also, Rich, have they got the elements to live up to last week's grand final? A penalty shootout that we saw last time out. We saw Jock Santa, Ronan Adrian take $5,000 and the top spot in week one of the FGS All-Stars Be My Team in North America. As you know, we're in South America now. Lots on the line, lots to discuss, and hopefully an exciting two legs of FIFA in front of us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the, the storylines are starting to, to, to peter off into multiple different directions, but they're all going to come together for one grand final. Is it going to be revenge? Is it going to be more of the same? Are we going to see one of the community members step up to yep. the mark as we did last week? Incredible performance from both of those community members in the grand final. I can see the game out the corner of my eye getting ready. The kit selection is underway. We are seconds away from our grand final. Who is going to be taking home the top prize of $5,000? Yeah, $5,000 will be decided across this two-legged game of FIFA. The experience that comes with it, Richard, priceless, priceless Sorry for these two players. It's been an incredible journey through the Sony Fan Cups, battling it against hundreds upon hundreds of players to be in this very position. It's grand final time here. We're jumping into it live right now for you. The first leg of two. Here we go. It is going to be SPQR's Felipe. And his teammate... Gamboa Lucas, who has been outstanding so far in this tournament. He hasn't been carried, and let's be honest, his teammate on the flip side of Resendo, AMZ Leo Zara, has also played so well. That's what's been so impressive, hasn't it, Richard, tonight? Just how good these fan cup winners have been. First chance to come forward now for Team SPQR Pele. In the driving seat, can't quite get that ball around the corner. It's a chance to breathe early on here, just five minutes in. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, there's opportunities for an early goal and potentially just to, to s calm the nerves as well. Hello. Back to Bellingham. Hull it. Position. Of course, plenty to talk about here. Plenty to unfold. These two have faced off many times in last year's 1v1 format in the FGS season. Felipe and Resende, as we know, Felipe was a playoff winner last year. Resende was a two time qualifier champion <laughs> and he won a common ball with Limited Taurus. They both shared lots of achievements last year. Everything but the playoffs, wasn't it? it seemingly for Resende, he, he was picking up trophies all year long, but couldn't quite get that final playoff spot. Tough matchup, though, if you remember, it was PH Zin, who, who he matched up against in the playoffs to try and get that E World Cup spot. PH Zin did beat him, but he's back this year into an FGS Masters team. We're going to see him in two weeks' time at that Team of the Season Cup. We're going to see both of these two. Guaranteed. It's in towards Cristiano Ronaldo, who will be there in the air. It's punched away, not dealt with. Hullet. Try his best. Team of the other rumour. Up and out to get two hands on the ball. Goalkeeper selection has been here, there, and everywhere tonight. We've seen Schmeichel van der Sarv. Sleep team of the year, Donnarumma. Just as good in that collection. Reversal has to go in. Bappe went for a double tap. Fizz pass into the Par 4 by 9. This has already been an end-to-end -end first 20 minutes here in the grand final. When it gets $5,000, all of that going to the Fan Cup winner. Hullet will wait patiently as Bellingham picks up the ball. Hullet now gets it to his feet. Whipped in. Hullet will be there. Ooh. and Rumor. Again, easy pickings. They can see what they're... Looking for Ascendo and his teammate. They just want that early goal. I, I think not necessarily that they're trying to, to play a particular style or try and get a, 
a variation of a goal. They just want whatever it's going to be and whatever the most direct or easiest way to get a goal is going to be. They want that to settle the nerves, to calm themselves down and to... Resende is used to this. He's used to finals. He's used to winning trophies. But for the for the two teammates in this matchup, for the two community members, whether that's Leo Zara, who, who's partnered obviously with Resende or on the other side of it, Gamboa Lucas, just to calm those nerves and to get those butterflies gone and really get the excitement building instead Nicely of the done. nervous energy. What a ball, lovely roulette. Pull it bundling his way literally through the fence there, Resende. Back in possession now, he'll try his best to do what he can. Right around that time. Into the counter, Gamboa Lucas, who has been superb, you have so to say that. Does well, tees up his teammate, brilliant block at the back. Now Cancelo across from left back to save the day. For that long though, Mbappe. Ronaldo, cheeky chip, back to Mbappe, somehow pushed off the ball. In a fair way, says the referee, it's Hakimi. Nearly. For a split second, was going to pull down Mbappe. Ronaldo shows his strength. Back to hurl it from distance. Oh. If it was time, does it ask the question of where that ball might have ended up? We've seen it before, I mean... Resende scored an exact finesse shot from that angle in this tournament today. Just wide of that left-hand post. I thought it was about to curl into the top corner, but it was always bending outside of the upright. Pull it. Pele drops the shoulder. Brilliant thing. Gamboa Lucas take a bow. Take a bow. Outstanding, incredible, amazing. How many superlatives do you want to describe him? We, I was just, I didn't, I was just talking about nerves. I'm talking about sort of the the anticipation. Looks like he's just playing in a final every other day. Yes, it's a 2v2 two two environment, but there are going to be moments of that, Richard. Magic. When you back yourself individually, you know you've got the ability, you know you've got the quality. On the flip side, might be seeing it from Team Resende. La Croqueta back inside, back to goal, it's R9, he can't turn, and Bappe can't also find his way around the fence. Half-time in the first leg of two. It is a very small and slender lead in the hands of SPQR's Felipe. And Gamboa Lucas, who has just scored one of the best goals of tonight's broadcast. Especially from a, a player that maybe you'd expect Felipe to be the one scoring it. You can see the goal in question right here. 40 minutes on the clock. Rude Hullet just finds it into Pele. Elastico, lovely left stick. Touch there inside to find it back onto his right boot. And you can see the live reaction as that one hit the back of the net. Zero smile. Look at that focus. The stats there showing the XG slightly in the favour of SPQR Felipe's team. Passing accuracy is still low, only 84%. They'll want to see that slightly improved if they want to try and keep this Resende team at bay. So if there's one thing we know about Team Enter Resende and Leo Zara is they do score goals. Also seen, especially from or side the, the, the so the side of Felipe, sorry, is that they've been out to come back from losing positions. It's a bit unfamiliar for them to be in a winning position this early into a first leg. Both semi-finals pretty much copied themselves in terms of really tight and narrow first leg. The second leg is when the blowout came into play. They're able to bag two, three goals and really push their way towards tonight's grand final. Two and a half thousand dollars is guaranteed to the losing team of this matchup. As we said, the fans, cup winners, Gamboa Lucas or Leo Zara will bag all of that cash. What a chance it could be for them to make FIFA Esports being a professional FIFA player career for them. Release the right 
first step. An investment to go into this pace. A bit more detail next year. Mostly well done, Pele. This could be a gift of a chance, Pele. Watch the comeback, Mbappe's there, Q and is running on the edge of the box. Pele still controls well, Resende back to team of the year, Ronaldo. A fake shot there and the cancel of another skill move. Not enough, though, to just sell. Pull it down the wrong way. Possession given straight back, though, to Inter's Resende. Ronaldo links him with R9. Again, defensively sound is Felipe. Gamboa Lucas, 60 minutes played here. Pass to forget about. In all honesty. Quick moving and fast pace game of FIFA this one. A single red shirt back. In the half of SPQ up. Defending well. And maybe a little bit of frustration could start to creep in. As you, I mean, we've all been there, Brandon. We've played in foot champions, division rivals. You find yourself 1 0 down and you're trying to sort of urge yourself back into the game. Talk about frustration. You played with a team of goalkeepers last weekend. You just find it seemingly feels like you can't do anything. You, you can't find that space. You can't create the opportunities. I mean, when you're using Jersey Dudek up top, I'm sure it's amplified. I mean, Jersey Dudek would have been not to play with. I don't think we got that close, unfortunately. <laughs> Perlite on the build up for Hullet now. Quality of players they've been able to use in these foot sports are incredible. Prime Michael moments. There's one of them on the ball right now. Ronaldo scoop turn. Tries his best to find a way through. Now taken out the shot there, and it was easy pickings from him with the up. Remember that only seven days ago. It was a bit late here in the UK, but we went to a penalty shootout in a grand final. America showed just how competitive they are in our first of these FGS All-Star. Be my teammate cup, ball into the box, it's whipped across, it's Hullet that's been making these darting runs into the box. That one dealt with just about in the end. I'm just looking. Team SPQR Felipe, they seem to be building into a flurry, a late flurry, a flourish here in this final 10 minutes. I think a second goal is somewhat pending. I'll, I'll be honest with you, the, the space is there. Nice. Mbappe still misses. For a split second, that's called FIFA. For one of the newcomers. South America FIFA he would certainly make a name for himself if he was to go and win tonight. Lovely ball, Gamboa Lucas into Mbappe, brave goalkeeper from Edwin van der Sar, had to be brave. Nicely done again, you speak about goals coming their way, look at the press, they're getting the hunt there. This time Pelé. Felipe in control. Not for so long, possession still in the hands though. Of Team SPQR here. Pull it. Back again, the balls are just bouncing their way back to Felipe or Gamboa Lucas. Back he goes, Bellingham back to goal. Mbappe, look at the just calmness in these moments, in these areas from the fan cup winner. Gamboa Lucas has not just got one, he's got both goals in this grand final. And he's pushing his team forwards towards the win before we've even kicked the ball in the second leg. But what did I say? I said there was a there was a goal pending. They were creating the opportunities. They were creating sort of nice angles in and around the box. Yes, they might not have been getting shots out the back of those chances, but build-up play and creating space and creating chances 
in around the box is really important. It encourages that positive play rather than having sort of hit and hopes or skill move runs. Just having that little bit of calmness on the ball as Gambawa Locus has shown can nice. help you so much. Big chance, good block. That will do us, Richard, at the halfway point in the grand finals here in South America. It's a two-goal cushion for the side of Team SPQR, Felipe and Gamboa Lucas. It's all to do for Inter's Resende and his teammate in AMZ, Leo Zara. We're off to a quick break, the last one of today's broadcast. When we return, can that man on your screen keep pushing him and his teammate forward to victory here in South America? We'll find out in a few minutes' time. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jamie here, professional FIFA player for Team Footwiz, and today I am back with another EA Masterclass. I'll be focusing on my two attacking presets in-game that help you get a goal back when you need to get a win. So in this situation here, as you can see, 2-1 down with about 20 minutes to go in the game. So it's not quite last chance saloon yet. I switched to my attacking tactic, which is press after possession loss. I want to win it back as soon as I lose it in attack. As you can see here, we unfortunately lose, lose the ball and turn it over. But however, our players straight away pressing after we lose our possession to win the ball back in an attacking position, which then means we have an easy shot on target we wouldn't normally have. And now I want to talk to you guys about my ultra attacking tactic, which is my high risk and a high reward last chance saloon tactic on FIFA 22. So as you can see here with our ultra attacking tactic setup, we do lose the ball in our opponent's box late on in the game. However, the importance straight away, as you can see on the mini map in this freeze frame of having 90 depth on our team. The only two players that are back are our center backs and that's all you want. Every single other player on the pitch is high up and obviously constant pressure on as well. It means they're suffocating my opponent. And as we progress the clip, we're able to win the ball back in a position like this where we're swarming my opponent's defense and we're able to win the ball back quickly. So that was my attacking and ultra attacking masterclass for you guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the pitch. The FIFA Global Series All-Stars Be My Teammate is presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Welcome back to the FGS All-Stars Be My Teammate Cup. If you've enjoyed tonight's broadcast, well, guess what? We're doing it again. We are moving all around the world with this competition format. Next Tuesday, we're back again for the final one. We combine Europe and the Middle East to bring you Team Hullet's Levy David, Guild Esports Nicholas 99 FC, Falcons MS Desari, and XL Esports' is Gorilla, alongside four Sony Cup fan winners. It's live from 6 p.m. UK time next Tuesday. We cannot wait for that one. As we said, in just a few weeks' time, there is that Team of the Season Cup going down also. Make sure you do tune in April 29th to May 1st. We'll have 32 2v2 teams battling it out 
for a serious lump sum of cash in the first ever offline land tournament, I believe, in just over two years' time. It's going to be a massive weekend of FIFA, that one, Richard. Yeah, it certainly will be. I mean, next week, Levy the Weed, Gorilla, Dasari, and Nicholas, all four of those players will be available to watch at the FGS team of the season cup in their respective duos whether it's from guild to falcons xl or team holly and ninjas in pajamas all four of those will be in action i simply cannot wait brandon i asked you this last week i'm going to ask you again while we wait for our second leg to get underway i asked you if you were in this predicament in this tournament and you'd qualified and you'd won the uh, qualifier the five matches of swiss six matches of swiss whatever it may take who would you want to be your duo partner which professional fifa player would you want oh you know what i would say nicholas okay i mean it's, it's a great shout it really is a great shout i Last week, I went for Mo Basher. This week, I'm going to go for... I'll tell you after the game's finished. Uh, are we talking for the four players in the tournament next week or any FIFA player? It? Any FIFA player. Oh, I see, uh, I I'll see. Let, I'll let I you know see, mine see, after the tournament's finished. Oh, I, think, I thought we were talking about the one next week. But it's from distance, early doors! Oh, my oh. days! What a start! To this second leg from a team that need to wake up. Resende smiling. They're back in the hump. Three minutes, and I believe it was his teammate, Leo Zara. The fan cut winner. For this is that one. It wasn't even time, Richard. Who really cares? Game on. There is still a lot of FIFA to play. It could be all she wrote now. He's on nine. Chance. Oh, huge, huge opportunity. He, he greened it, and he went straight down Donnarumma's throat. What a frantic start we've had here in this second leg. Five minutes in, we've already got a goal. We should have had two goals. The time green, but just down the goalkeeper's throw, that one, that was Resendo. With the red icon above, his in-game player's head. Chance to break, just offside. Out of the four players, we'll do that one quickly, Richard. Who would you want to be with in a 2v? Two team out of the four players that are in action next week. I think it was a close one between Gorilla and Nicholas for me, but I think Nicholas just edges it. Um, Dasari for me. The uh, the experience that he's got, the the championships under his belt. I mean, he he is is incredible. I, I'd probably just put my controller down and let him play two v one. I mean, why not? The player of that experience. Again, he will also be involved in that team of the season cup. Just a few weeks' time. The five thousand dollars up for grabs here tonight. Yeah, great idea. You mentioned it in the start of today's broadcast, Richard. The pro-am does sort of give these players the up-and-coming chance to really. Just grasp the chance to be on a broadcast, to be in their first ever FIFA tournament, online or offline, whatever it may be. The chance and opportunity that they'll never forget in a hurry. Just for getting there tonight. We want a PlayStation 5 alongside the cash. They have been able to accumulate, depending on how many matches they've won in the broadcast. Certainly feels like it's been a very promising start for this one for Resendo and Leo Zara. Whatever they've talked to half-time in the three, four-minute break, it has worked wonders for them. Mbappe, lovely, close control, dribbling back to CR7. Pele will try his best to elastico himself away one or two players. That was Resendo trying his best to outsmart the defensive work of Team SBQR Filippo. And we 
we had a, a frantic start, didn't we, to this matchup? But it, it seems to have slowed down a little bit now, especially in the the goal scoring department and the goal chance creation department. I say that Jal Cancelo gets into a good area where there could be a little potential pass move across the box building. Hold it, Ronaldo twists and turns, can't turn any more than he already has though, unfortunately. Ronaldo driving back to R9, that finesse from distance can be very dangerous. Will he look to do it again? Not this time. Have a shot, why not? Jude Bellingham says, yes, please. That one was it also not timed, but it still brought out a brilliant save from the goalkeeper, regardless. See with the old Donnarumma. He's flying across his goal, chance to the live. Marquinhos will come to provide a back to goal, drops the shoulder once and twice. Ruben Diaz just about matches up the tackle he went left he went right he went back in on himself again but on the fourth time of guessing the Portuguese defender will just come across and stick out a strong right boot just as one chance goes Resende is away and Leo Zeiras could be an opportunity up the other end here for team SPQR Felipe to further extend their lead in this matchup just not enough space there. Good step that out the back. Maldini stepping in and winning the ball back. Needs to do more of that. Oh, no. Why not from that far out? Why not? And very nearly. That would have been all square at 2 2. Off the woodwork, R9. Oh, Vassal has to go again from Ronaldo. But at this time, no way back. They've just looked like a completely different team on both ends of the scale here. Team SPQR, Felipe and his teammate in Gamboa Lucas have looked helpless. They've looked like they've lacked confidence. They've lacked any sort of possession, to be completely honest. Also, on the flip side, Team Resende have been oozing with confidence and they've hit the bar, they've hit the woodwork. It's been about one or two brilliant saves. They would have been easily at an even Steven score and at 2-2 hit. As we do go into half-time as well, I'm sure the stats are going to paint a very interesting picture because there is been real big opportunities to, to go for Resende's way here alongside Leo Zero. We're going to have a look at the opening goal of this matchup. It did fall for Resende and Leo Zero. Two minutes in, Brandon, we were talking about teammates, and R9 Ronaldo pulled that out of the locker. Yeah, what a goal it was, by the way, and it was from the team. CR7, I should say. Who, who bagged the goal, and then look at this one. This is Resende this time. Went, you know what, my teammate's giving it a go. Why don't I from this far out? And it's just, oh. you know it could happen, you know it might happen, but it's just the element of surprise that Resende offered how close that could have been to an even scoreline at 2-2. Two, two. A back on the way for the second leg of uh, this second half in the grand final. In 45 minutes time, we will be crowning another FTS All-Stars Be My Teammate champion. And so far, that two goal cushion for Felipe and Gamboa Lucas might be the difference to send them on their way. We need to see more from them though, Richard, because they have really haven't. I think mean, the stats half time, they, they didn't even register a shot. No, they didn't. They didn't. The HD was 0, 0.0 at the halfway point, but again, just because they're not registering shots doesn't mean they're not playing well. An extra pass there and they've got a goal. Still could be a chance. Nice feet. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And again, it's not the pros popping up with the goals, Richard. It's the teammates. The man that's been the magic man. Gamboa Lucas is right in his own professional CV now. I'm a, I'm a player that wants to play FIFA Esports for the foreseeable future. Sign me up, get me in contract, I'm ready to go right now. What a performance. He has been, I would even argue, the the, the goal scorer, the, the more sort of clinical player in this duo. You, you wouldn't be able to tell who is the pro and who is the, the competition winner. You just wouldn't. 
And again, just to go back and give this a bit more clarity, I'm, I'm more than aware that Gamboa Lucas right now does have a, a team he plays for SM Gaming, but if, if SPQR came knocking on his door, we know SPQR very well, Richard. They could be like, you know what, you've played very well today. Fancy maybe looking at your options or revisiting your options for the next start of the following season. Finesse from distance, two hands on it from Gunnarama. This man has been incredible. When the backs were against the walls for Team SPQR, when they haven't been, as you rightly said, you know, took the words out of my mouth, Brandon, they might not have been playing, they might have been reddishing shots, doesn't mean they haven't been playing well. One more extra pass or an extra skill move. Next for you know, a two goal cushion's been reinstalled, and now that let, they look like the team that are cruising their way to victory here. He's packed all three goals in this final. He's bagged all three goals and he has been Four. clinical. Potentially. Oh, should have been. I think he maybe got a little bit too confident there. Went to the reverse elastic all back inside. It looks like a three backs in use here for Team Inter And you can see the bottom right corner, the stamina bar is so low. The constant press is out in full flow. They're trying to urge and fight and claw their way back into this game but with touches like that and a wall of red shirts in front of you i'm not sure they're going to find a way nicely down with a flick up has been Cuba just 20 minutes left to play. It might be all over at this point. Ronaldo couldn't get it down. It was an unbelievable chance. Yeah, a couple of opportunities going missing here for Team SPQR Felipe. But do you know when we say, Brandon, we watch a lot of competitive FIFA, we watch a lot of FIFA esports that played at such a high level. When you have a lead, you force your opponent's hand. They force the hand here of team into Resende and what they've been able to do with Resende and Leo pressing forward and, and bringing more bodies onto the game team pressing playing a three back all these offensive changes it allows team SBQR Felipe to pick up the bones almost just to see where the space is to keep possession and then when they get an opportunity kill the game off go four five one up make sure that it's it's written down in the history books that five thousand dollars will be going the way of Gamboa Lucas build him Ronaldo hill to heel how can Sala now doing his part La Croqueta literally trying his best to put on a plate for his teammate Mbappe who run another plate now for a goal kick, it's the last chance. This is a constant pressure we can probably guess from Resendo and Leo Zira. As they'll do everything they can to make things happen. We can report on the changes that are at least being made. That's Alan say Maximin's making his way onto the pitch as that foot fantasy in-game item. Alongside two more changes there, Eusebio and Croy off the bench to just inject their pace and last real chance to make things happen here. I mean, the the changes that are coming on need to be miracle workers. I'll set Maximin. I, I just, Johan Cruyff, I don't know. I don't think they're going to get the opportunities to score. Not, not necessarily that they, they're going to miss opportunities or they're going to sort of squander chances. I, I don't know if they'll get those golden opportunities in front of goal. Ronaldo. Time is really against them. So are the chances they're going to be offered. This would be a bit of revenge for Felipe as well. Just two weeks ago, we lost in a semi final in the FGS Masters Cup. Cheeky chip, he's on his way. And it's the captain of the team that's bagged himself a goal in the process, too. Felipe of SPQR, the 18 year old wonder kid who has come onto this FIFA eSports scene and taken it by storm. A FIFA E World Cup grand finalist last year, looking to put his mark onto this performance.
It might be his first goal out of the four. But no doubt he has been a massive part of this grand final result over the two legs. And in all honesty, he's found a great partner. They're not done yet. Ronaldinho. And Baba Lucas says, see you later. A little bit of heavy touch. Back it goes again. It's literally oh. on a plate for Ronaldinho. Yeah, they, they've got the cake baked. They've got the icing, they've got the cherry. They want to add some sparklers, some candles. Get the banners out. Gamboa Lucas is about to party. This is what it's all about, these FTS All-Star be my teammate tournaments a chance to strike gold and that's exactly what team SPQR have done Felipe the pro and the Sony fan cup winner in a fellow Brazilian Gamboa Lucas who bagged three goals in the grand final he's also bagged himself five thousand dollars in the process as well they will be your champions here in South America and all we'll say is keep an eye out for that man on your screen. Gamboa Lucas is a name for the future. Wow, grand final to remember Richard Buckley. When their backs were against the wall, they came back with a knockout blow, extended their lead to two again, and then added another goal, just to put the perfect cherry on the top of a three-tier icing layered cake. Describe how you please. Felipe added that fourth goal on, and they will be your winners here in technically week two here in South America. And I can't wait for, for Ryan to break down the goals as well in the analysis because some of the technical plays were so nice. The little roulette for the Mbappe goal, the, just the, the creativity that they showed in the final third. And they didn't have a lot of shots on target. I think I just saw the stats there. They had three shots on target in that second matchup. But they scored all of them. Like they, they created very few chances, but the chances that they did create were golden clear-cut, 100% opportunities to score goals, six, seven yards out, one-on-ones, lots of goal to aim for. They didn't necessarily take those long-range finesse shots or those, I don't want to say Hail Marys because the finesse is a viable way of scoring, but they weren't taking those shots. They were electing to build up play, not necessarily having tons of shots on target, but they were so, so clinical when they got those opportunities and fair play to them. A deserved winner, Gamboa Lucas and SPQR Felipe. Maybe a sign of things to come. We'll find out if SPQR will be lifting that team of the season cup in two weeks' time. Yeah, just a quick word on the winner, the fan cup winner. Was not just a, a fan of competitive FIFA. He's a, a pro player in his own right, building up to be one of the better players here in South America. Just a couple of words on Gamboa Lucas. What was so impressive about his performance tonight? Because he seemed like he's had such a good understanding mechanically of FIFA. Yeah, uh, look, all the players here know how to play FIFA at the very top level. They watch, they play, they compete. Division Rivals is a great tool to improve the PlayStation Competition Center daily competition, weekly, monthly cash prizes. It builds up that reputation of playing in competitive FIFA. But when you're doing it, at a escalator level, when you're doing it for $5,000, when you're doing it with one of the best players, not only in your region, but in the world as your partner, when you're doing it on an EA broadcast, this is where the pressure can potentially take over and you can start playing worse. He rose to that pressure, the calmness, the composure, and just the general style of play that they brought. Very impressive. I'm expecting to see big things from Gamboa Lucas. And look, you mentioned it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him an SPQR journey in 12 months' time. Oh, yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that. Congratulations, we said. $5,000, all of it goes to the Fan Cup winner, by the way. Lovely touch uh, from all involved with, with Sony and EA here uh, with these FGS All-Stars being my team. Uh, Richard, it's been a pleasure, as always, commentating and sharing the mic with you tonight here in Week 2. We are back again in the commentary booth in seven days' time for Europe Times uh, Middle East, you can call it. Four more players will be in action. But that's it from us. We're throwing it down to Rachel and Ryan to break down the grand final. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Richard. I love always hearing their thoughts, Ryan, on that matchup. But I want your thoughts on Felipe and Gamboa Lucas, our champions, of course. They looked, especially in that first leg, so in control. And like a yeah. pair we have been seeing playing together for years. What really impressed you about those two? 
Again, I thought they were really disciplined defensively, especially in that first game. The, the second leg at the start it was a bit shaky, but the goals that they scored to seal the game as well from Gabriel Lucas was unbelievable. They were fantastic. And we'll take a look at them shortly. But again, I feel like they, they deserved it. It looked as if Resende and um, his teammate went to get the game back a little bit too early. You can see their stamina bar was very low from the, the start of the second half. So it was almost mission impossible to get back into it. But yeah, Team Felipe, they took advantage and scored when they needed to. Yeah, the, the score ended 4-1, of course, and Gamboa Lucas got three of those goals. Ryan Bissot, you can break them down right now in our analysis presented by PlayStation Tournaments. Yes, of course, the highlights from the final. Of course, Team Felipe. It was SPQ of Felipe and Gamboa Lucas partnered up, up against Inter's Resende and Leo Zara. And it was the, the build-up here from Resende led to a shot here, which hit, well, just sorry, just went wide from Ridhood. I thought if that was time green, potentially could have hit the back of the net. That was a key chance for them to maybe take the lead. But this was the build up from Felipe or Team Felipe. Ridhood into Pele. And this was the dribbling here, the elastico, the beautiful left stick dribbling from Gamboa Lucas and the left foot from Pele in at the near post to give them the one goal lead as we go into the latter stages of the first leg. An interception followed or followed an offside trap another interception given away carelessly but make no mistake the dribbling here sending the keeper with the keeper movement again and Gamboa Lucas puts it into basically an open net with Mbappe 2-0 now going into the second leg all to play for and they needed to start off well for team Resende and that is exactly what they did a first time reverse elastical with R9 Ronaldo a pass into CR7 and a white time finesse shot past the goalkeeper into the corner fantastic shot from outside the box and that was a common theme between Leozara and Resende they took a lot of long shots as we saw there off the bar that could have been the goal to equalize which maybe would have given them the chance to go on and win the game but we go into the second half now and this is the pass the reverse elastical tackled and then the pass again into Mbappe another reverse elastical a great turn great dribbling the three touch roulette into the corner and it was 3-1 there. Gamboa Lucas again with all three goals as it stood at this moment in time. A ball over the top in the latter stages of the game. Can they seal it? A ball row again with CR7 on rushing keeper. A simple chip. And it is 4-1. SPQ Felipe with the final goal, the final score. And crowns them out as the champions of today. Yeah, I mean, Gamboa Lucas, Ryan, what do you do when you're him now? You just defeated Resende and Klinger, two awesome names in the competitive scene. How are you feeling? What do you do to push on in your career now? I think um, what Richard and Brandon said is key just to keep evolving yourself in maybe just community tournaments or even if it is just division rivals where you can play against other people around your skill level. Just keep practising and having this taste of, of winning something, especially when you're partnered up with a pro and against other pros as well, is a fantastic accomplishment. So again, for him, massive congratulations. And he's got the skill set. You can see some of the goals he scored. They were fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Quality always shines through, of course. But our week two champions then are SPQR, Felipe and Gamboa Lucas. And this is what we have for you guys next week. April the 26th, of course, we are heading to Europe. Um, there we go. And obviously the African regions. We have Levy, we have uh, Nicholas, Gorilla and MS Desari. I mean, we've got two world champions in there. What is not to love? Of course, it's at the earlier time as well of 6 p.m. UK time. That's BST, of course. It's British summertime now over here. Guys, cannot wait for that one. I want to say thank you again, Ryan, as always, for joining me and to Richard and Brandon for casting as usual and, of course, to all eight of our competitors for taking part this week. Of course, we couldn't do it without them, but again, congratulations one final time for our Week 2 FGS All-Star Champions of SPQR Felipe and Gamboa Lucas. There they are, the champions on your screens. Well, they had to do it in style, didn't they? 5-3 was their first scoreline. And then 4-1 over Inter Resende and Leo Zira to be crowned our Week 2 champions, FGF All-Stars, Be My Teammate. We get to do it all again, of course, next week, April 26th, 6 p.m. BST. Be there or be square. Good night, guys. We hope you enjoyed watching. See you soon.